Um, and I, I, I did some, actually I put another tweet out a week or so ago, which is uh, my, my guess is if you look back in ten years' time, that metaverse type technologies will be more important than five G or cryptocurrency, and less important than AI or gene editing. Why do you think that? That's a, that's a big old claim, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, I, and I'm, I'm sticking saying, your neck out. I'm here. pretty much sticking <laughs> my neck out there. Hello and welcome to another telecoms.com podcast. We've got a guest again. We're on a bit of a run with guests. And we've got Dean Bubbly, who we've... Uh, I've even called out. I said, come on, Dean. Yeah. Come on in. And because uh, you, you often... You're kind enough to comment on us on, on Twitter every now and then. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. So I thought, let's get him in. Thanks for this. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, you know, I'm a regular listener. I, I'm a big, big podcast fan. Although I do listen to everything at 2x speed, so everything is Yeah, so we're a bit helium-y, are we? <laughs> deathly slow today. Yeah, right. like I, I'm used to listening to you at twice this. And, yeah. and, that, and 2x speed's fine, you still get, get the gist of what's going on. Well, I'll I might have to try it now. You, you normally yeah. sound like Donald the Duck. <laughs> yeah, because... <laughs> yeah, you're mad! Oh, that's impressive. That's good. <laughs> I know. A man of hidden talents. I know, I... <laughs> I try not to let kids know I can do that because then they just pester me to do my <laughs> Donald Duck voice the whole time. Because um, I yeah. listen to like like Joe Rogan and stuff, which is a three-hour podcast, and that, I've got to be said, getting that down to an hour and a half is, has some appeal. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm probably the only person on the planet who's listens, well, goes through The Economist cover to cover every week because I basically listen to the, 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 the electronic version at 2X. So I, I go out for a long week at the walk at the weekend and actually just consume that. How long I don't, is that? I, yeah, it's good that you can do that now, actually, The Economist. Um, you can listen to the articles. Well, and, right. Yeah, do you have yeah. to click on each one? Or is no, there no, 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 no. It just goes on. It goes all the way on. through. Yeah. So I, I guess wow. it probably could take I might have to try that. three and a half, four hours to go through the whole thing, but I just go out for a long walk at the weekend. At 2X, yeah. sorry. At 2x, yeah, there's a lot of it. Because well, that's a lot of really economist, slowly, huh? actually, economist stuff yeah. as well. So even, on, even 2x would actually sound quite normal with yeah, that, I think. Yeah, but yeah. They're really sort of plodding the way no, they're I, I subscribe to The Economist, but I often don't get around to reading it at all. Well, whereas if, I, if I'm trying to watch video at 2x, I find that's much harder. Thing. That's much harder. That's like, that's yeah. like watching football from the 30s or something. <laughs> <laughs> Which has its merits. <laughs> You, you should have that. You should, if they, if you do two X on the audio, they should have some kind of Chomley Warner commentary. <laughs> <laughs> and Plucky Erickson did jolly well this week, or something like that. Um, so yeah, so great to have you here, mate. Um, and you brought some beers. You brought some Elvis juice, which is one of the things you brought, which is a Brewdog oh. one that says grapefruit infused IPA. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. I don't know if I tried it before. The, the grapefruit is very subtle, though. It's not like um, right. You know, it's not like actually eating your breakfast. Well, that's about the thing about infusion. It can mean all sorts of things, can't it? It can be pouring a shitload in or just <laughs> or just a little suggestion. Yeah. Anyway, so it's obviously more towards the latter scale. Well, a flutter of one. grapefruit. And, uh, and we might be getting on to them in a bit. Dean also brought in some um, Adnam's ghost ship because it's we're nearly at Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. so it seemed enough. to be Halloween appropriate. You, you thankfully didn't come dressed as a skeleton no, no, or a pumpkin or something. And thankfully, yeah, there's no decoration around the no. studio here. I was, I was a bit dreading this to be like no, we're not. pumpkin <laughs> ghosts and skeletons <laughs> hanging off the wall. We're not, we're not, we're not that chirpy. <laughs> we're just as dour and cynical as you are, which is why you're a perfect fit for the pod. Um, so great to have you here, Dean. What have we been up to? Actually, one thing I want to say: we, we are going to talk about Facebook in a bit, but I quite like to sometimes um, uh, mention sort of hassle I'm getting on the comments from people because I, I quite enjoy it. I'm like, bring it on. Do you get that much, Dean? Because you're very active on Twitter, which we're going to come to. Do you get sometimes people pushing back on your tweets? Not, not that much. No, it can be uh, a, bit a little bit on LinkedIn kind of. sometimes, but even then, it's you know. Uh, I mean, yeah, sometimes I'll, I'll take aim at bits of the telecoms establishment, um, but actually, quite often I find that people, particularly when they leave their jobs, they'll they'll get in touch and say, "I couldn't say this when I worked for whoever." <laughs> yeah. but actually, yes, you're we right. agree. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a, it's a <clears throat> no, I get, I get, I get um, fairly sort of direct confrontation. In fact, before I get forget one other shout out I wanted to do um, in the area of craft beer, actually, is uh, Jerry, who works in PR at Ericsson, and I know is a regular listener. And she said she'd be cracking a beer when she watches this one when I was chatting to her. And I know she's a big fan of what they called. Oh my God, she told Signal. Anyway, there's some there's some craft brewers she's a big fan of. So, cheers, Jerry. Here's to you. Okay. Um, 
On my, I wrote a story. It really wasn't telecoms at all. This is classic Scott self indulgence. Um, but you know, there's been this whistleblower, this Facebook whistleblower, Francis, Francis Morgan or whatever, mm, Morgan yeah. Haugen, something like that. Oh, Haugen, sorry. Um, yeah. And it's been quite obvious to me from the start that she's no regular whistleblower. She's no Edward Snowden. She's no Julian Assange. She's been carried around aloft by the establishment, been given a red carpet to every gov- government institution. She got she got blue checked on Twitter the second she went on it. It all smells it all smells dodgy as far as her supposed dissident sort of guerrilla whistleblower status is supposed to be. And I wrote a piece um, headlined, Facebook, in parenthesis, whistleblower is a government Trojan horse. Um, the, the theory being that she's basically there. She's gone and spoken to Congress in the States. She's gone and spoken to the House of Commons over here. And every time it's to say Facebook needs, basically, this, this is to paraphrase, Facebook needs more government intervention. Facebook needs to be more closely regulated, monitored, told what to do. So that's why I call her a Trojan horse. Yeah. Because I think she's just a handy tool. I mean, in the nicest possible way um, for for the state to to just use as evidence that it's got to poke its nose more into this big private company that is Facebook. Um, so I, I, I was saying, presumably the issue there is that if any state is going to poke its nose, it's probably that presumably going to have to be the US government. I mean, it's not going to work for each individual government to poke its nose well, in different ways. Well, try telling the EU that. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, <clears throat> anyway. I saw you got some abuse on this. Yeah, yeah, so not, it's not quite Not just fun. on telecoms.com, but you got some on LinkedIn as well. You might not even be aware of no, it. No, I'm not. Is this, has it been uh, up on LinkedIn? People giving me shit. Andy Jones, who you might know as oh, a yeah. consultant, he, he, he took issue with Excellent. it. Excellent. He was grumbling about it on LinkedIn. And I was, I was thinking... Does Scott even know? Because I know you yeah. check the comments, but um, but not on LinkedIn. I hardly ever go on LinkedIn. But it, but the people who take issue with it are always people who it's never sort of based on how you've written it or anything. It's it's just they they've got the opposite views. Yeah, well, <laughs> they're, quite they're, quite they're, that, they're that, sort of um, that's exactly. But he was it. quite. I don't know. He was quite sort of rude he's the way. Quite, he's I'm not going to read right. it out online. He's quite rude. I thought the way oh, he said I will. it. I'm going to look <laughs> it up now. Which, which, actually, which is fair enough. I mean, it's not like any of us are over polite in what we say. No. So at least he's not I'll, hiding I, behind. I can find it for you avatar. more easily if you want. Yeah, well, please do. Well, it's going to take me yeah, a while. It's, 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 like, it's like someone wants to come at me on, on online, whether it's on Twitter or LinkedIn, or you know, I don't use Facebook for for work. Then well, good LinkedIn luck to at least they're not hiding. They yeah, true. Real name. True. Yeah, I haven't even got it as any alerts. I haven't got alerts saying someone's someone's dissing you on LinkedIn. <laughs> um, but I'll find that. In the meanwhile, while you're looking for that, Ian, I'll read out some of the lip I've been getting on this one. So um, I'm going to read out a whole of it. But some guy goes, very unbalanced article, blah, 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 but hurt, but hurt, but hurt. Um, and uh, and just, just make stuff up. Like he goes, also the downplaying of an armed mob attack on the seat of government while I was in session is shocking and astounding. I didn't downplay it. What I made is some reference to the current government using it as a as a pretext for cracking down on its own population. So he, so my response to that was, there are so many straw men and red herrings in this that I can only assume you mistakenly commented on the wrong story. Yeah. Because you can't, when people use fallacies to have a go at you, I think the worst thing you can do is ever give their fallacy the benefit of the doubt. Mm. I.e., if someone attacks you with a straw man, which means creating mm. a parallel argument that's different to one you get, if you then try and defend that straw man, then you're playing on their turf. You just got to tell them to fuck off. Yeah, um, calling out logical fallacies. Yeah, yeah of all yeah, sorts. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah he but, loves doing that, and that, and that annoys people as well. Because there is something quite sort of supercilious about it, which I enjoy. So but your story is Facebook you, whistleblower is a government Trojan horse. Yeah, is that a headline. <laughs> my, my view is, if you're going to be supercilious, you're doing it for free. You should be charging them for that. Well, quite. <laughs> I know, not everyone gets, yeah, gets yeah. that. Uh, the, the, the phrase, phrase uh, in fact, I got this from my dad, which was, everyone is entitled to my opinion. Mm-hmm. Which I think is <laughs> wise words to live by, really. So someone called Duncan Curry, who's at Red Hat, right. put your story up on LinkedIn and said, an interesting viewpoint, would you consider your data and the decisions that affect your freedom of speech to be controlled by the fact-checkers and FBI okay. and or our supreme leaders with political corruption oozing through their veins? As at the end of the day, it all comes down to dollars and, and who gains most to become wealthier. And then Andy Jones responded. I'm not going to read out the comment because you can read it out if you want. But Yeah, sure. There's, there's Andy Jones's response. Andy Jones. So this is just reading it verbatim. By, in parentheses, <laughs> by, in quotes, interesting, I assume you mean in the distinctly British sense of the word, i.e. synonymous with, quote, complete tripe. Oh, touche, Andy. Um, when mediocre trade press... Oh, 
Well, that's, that's, that, that's what this is why I thought it was quite rude. Oh, um, Andy, you cut me deep, dude. <laughs> Um, when mediocre trade press try to spice up their reportage with political clickbait, clickbait, moi, um, <laughs> brackets evidenced by the author's replies to the comments, on which, which I'm coming to, so thanks for flagging that one, Andy, the one non-moronic thing you've said so far. Um, <laughs> it is both sad and laughable in equal measure. Okay. All right, well done, Andy. Is it, is it equal measure? Or is it slightly more sad than slightly more I laughable? Like to, I like to think more laughable. <laughs> I, I like to err towards laughable myself. If, I, if you can't get a laugh, then what can you do? And so, yes, on, on my... There's another chat... It was like a criticism of the whole trade press there in, as well. It's like... Oh, it's okay, so... It, there's so much... That, what Americans have a phrase, they go, so much cope. <laughs> I just butt her. I People just get in, get in their feathers ruffled because something's happened that, that isn't completely consistent with their view of the world. So that's what this guy, Tim Lynch, who was the one who was using all the straw men, was going. And then a chap called Dan Pitt was going, what, so telecoms.com is buying into conspiracy theories now? And then he just says a bit, which I had to call out. He goes, I thought companies felt an obligation to be good community citizens. Why did he think that? Why did he think that? Quite. <clears throat> so I called that out in my comment and went, lol. Uh, and then and then when I don't agree, and if you, uh, and it, at the end of it, he flounced off and said, he goes, telecoms.com has been number four on my priority list of reliable sources of information on our field. Perhaps, number four? He's got a ranking list of reliable well, quite. sources. <laughs> and then he goes, as his final, <laughs> as his final burn, <laughs> perhaps I'm fine with just one to three. Well, who are one to three? I want to know. Well, quite. <laughs> And so I said, so I said, I don't agree. And if you want to restrict yourself to writers who do, then so be it. I mean, that's what it comes down I th- to. I think number He's, four sounds quite good on a reliability list. I'd be quite well, happy I, to I be did say four on a reliability list. My last, my last comment four. was was also only number four uh, out of four. Yeah. Um, he, and, he reads four sources. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you know, and and God, there was more. Someone who used a pseudonym, believer in science and corporate responsibility. Why you'd use that as a pseudonym, I don't know. Goes called me a corporate shill. Um, and says uh, and says you're really getting out there, Mr. Pacino. Your readers deserve better. And so I just I was getting bored by this. I just said they love it because you do. I know you do. Um, and then so on and so on and so on. So you know, one person had a pop. It was a fairly big moan, but it was also some feedback. He goes, you know, um, he, he doesn't like the direction this article indicates about the website. And I went, well, thanks for your feedback. Interesting to see where the line of the sand is for some, because that's what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Is that I've said some stuff that some people don't like. Well, well, to be honest, I don't agree with everything you say. But no, I'm still sat here. <laughs> there we go. And I, I look forward to I look forward to some robust exchanges. Yeah. Now that I've finished being self indulgent and talking about my my trolls, so let's cut to actually i better do the, the that's thing that's the longest intro we've ever had i know i know that's some <laughs> longest bit of bullshit so two things what are we going to talk about i think we're going to talk about um dean is as i think i mentioned a minute ago active on twitter um for which i commend you i'm not that active on twitter mainly because i don't trust myself to not do right career ending stuff but uh, you're self-employed aren't you yeah well firstly i work for myself so yeah. the boss says it's all right and yeah. secondly i actually have <laughs> other online channels to rant about to, to do yeah. my ranting on so there yeah, we go I, no I, you're I try, very active on linkedin I, as well I try, I try and keep signal to noise on my professional twitter relatively good occasionally it'll slip a little bit but yeah uh, but but you'll, yeah. it'll be about telecoms telecoms stuff. and tech and yeah and i might i might go so so some of the stuff i know that this is going to be trigger warning green tech coming um yeah yeah so i might already, talk about before we started yeah. i was sort of bitching about greenwash so yeah yes. whereas i yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of be a big advocate for things like nuclear power or for zero emission aviation or various things to do with i'm with you on nuclear yeah, power, wind, wind solar, yeah. nuclear power is our only hope i'm <clears throat> Uh, on the matter of green, another tangent. On the matter of green, I'm all in favour of practical technological solutions. I don't, mm. as I said, I think on the last pod, I don't want the planet to be destroyed. Mm. I'm going to put that out there. I'd rather the planet not be destroyed. I've got kids, yeah. Um, but I just don't. There's just so much posturing and virtue signalling and just bullshit. Oh, God, That's there's more than ever. I, I actually quite moment. liked the. UK. Yeah, you wrote a bit about I, I, that. Yeah. yeah, and I wrote. I, I quite liked the UK net zero strategy that came out last week, which was, which was, Ooh. it was very much not hair shirt it was like we're going to have technology based yeah. solutions we're going to try to minimize the sort of behavioral aspect to it which frankly you know the nice thing about nuclear power is the electricity still works the same way it always does or you know electric vehicles are a bit more of a faff than you know petrol mm. but the same thing is if someone wants to c- can create a you know a piece of meat 
that is artificial grown in a lab, but it tastes like chicken or steak or whatever. Steak or whatever. Yeah, frankly, if it's functionally equivalent, it tastes just as nice, and it's and good I, for you. I, I don't have to feel guilty about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and yeah. Whereas the no, I've got to um, you know make a purposeful effort to fly less or eat less yeah. or whatever. Like Joanna Lumley, who wants rationing to come back. And I like Joanna Lumley. She's lost her goddamn mind. Ah, we well, might come I, back anyway. I want yeah. electric pl- uh, flight I planes. Did you see that yeah. today on the, on the environmental issue? Oh, wow. So they've both gone spectator <coughs> and economist, and I subscribe to both. Who, who said gone the mainstream exactly media the same. was all telling the same line, eh? So <laughs> for, for those not, not watching on video, spectator and economist this week have both gone with the cover headline, Cop Out. Uh-huh. The only difference being that Economist has put a hyphen in. It's on Monday, right? Like um, when film but, studios bring out the same film, yeah, three years yeah, apart, yeah. and call it 1492 or something. But. I know, I was appalled when I when I published my book to then search for it on Amazon to see that Ben Elton had a book called Identity Crisis. Oh, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Although, to some extent, you, you know, at least it does prove that there, there isn't collusion amongst all the yeah. different branches of the media. <laughs> no. Yeah, so, it's just because you know, they would have gone, oh, we've got to do this. There's no conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. Like, they just both went I just thought it was amusing. They both came to the letterbox that opened them up, both of them, and it's like... Like, I mean, normally the headlines are really different, obviously, you'd yeah, expect. Yeah. It's like, what the hell's going on here? There's got to be other <laughs> cop puns, though. I know. Like, buddy cop. Or, oh, God knows. Anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, Copperfield. Uh, Copperfield. Oh, we go. <laughs> <laughs> Feel a cop or something. No. That, that sounds even worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, yes. So, so yeah, Dean's active on social media. And uh, among recent tweets from Dean have been, um, which I won't go into now, but we will when we finally get finish the intro and get around to starting, um, talking, having a pop at sort of 5G in a sort of let's stop talking more generally about it and start looking at specific useful things, mm. useful technologies, useful use cases, all that sort of thing. So I reckon... Um, we might, you know, a, a caption, Pierre, for, for when we're having our inevitable exchange on Monday morning might be Misk. something like, Misk. Uh, might be like 5G <laughs> fails or, yeah. you know, something like that. Because we, 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 we definitely talk about areas in which we've, w- the industry's dropped the ball, but I think we'll also be constructive and talk about areas in which yeah. they could improve. Uh, I mean, my, my, my thing that I've been saying for a few years now is it's, it's important, but it's just another G. Yeah. Mm, and yeah, there's usually a picture of a Jaguar car just to annoy everyone on that, and there's a five G Jag. But <coughs> right, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's an incremental upgrade. And yes, people will talk about oh, it's got this core network and service based this and slicing. We'll talk about that in a minute. But that's internal plumbing. Yes. Yeah, it's like why does anyone care? It, yeah, it's like upgrading the, the software in your toaster. Yeah, it's, it's great if you're a toaster manufacturer, but yeah. I don't really care if I'm going to go and buy a new. You know, Dulit or Breville or whatever. You must be posh and I'm if you've got software in your toaster. <laughs> um, but then you are about to move to West Hampstead, so I gather. So um, fair enough. Sorry, sorry for doxing you there. Well, um, speaking of, sorry, city, of, city of the month because it's the last one. Oh yeah, month. Hampstead is our top city. Okay, and then followed closely by Raleigh, Carolina. Okay, Weird. of course. What's, yeah. What's yeah. in Raleigh? Are there any tech companies yeah. there? Or? I don't know. Raleigh. Yeah, Raleigh, Raleigh is like what's called Research Triangle, though, is it? Is it right. That's, that's North Carolina, it. isn't it? Raleigh's North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, North Carolina's the posher Carolina, I think. <laughs> South Carolina's a bit more sort of Appalachian and... It's got Charleston, which is cute. Deliverance. Like Charleston's it. nice, Yeah, it's, it? it's nice. I, I, it's, that's one of the places I really want to go beach, to. But You can but do that dance. But on the other brilliant. hand, it's... it's do a little dance with your leg popping up. <laughs> anyway. That, that was obviously a conversation breaker. <laughs> um, so, uh, so we've got as far as the first thing we're going to talk about. We haven't had that many beers, by the way, everyone. In case you're wondering why we're being so silly, we're, we're half just, an we're hour just in. obviously in that mood. <laughs> um, uh, and then we're going to talk. I've written about. So I, I mentioned with Facebook. There's been some Facebook news today. They've rebranded themselves Meta for reasons best known to them. But we're going to talk not so much about the rebrand itself, although there is some sort of corporate strategic relevance to that but but the metaverse which it makes reference to um and why we should care about that if at all and i might also talk about my most read story of the week which is another sort of internet culture internet economy thing um and then i think we're going to finish off talking about quarterlies um i haven't written any myself this week uh way wrote up nokia for us yesterday but you wrote up nokia didn't you ian mm. um so we'll do that um and like reading wrote up huawei i've only seen their release but there's some stuff to talk about well, I, there. I, I think it's maybe interesting to sort of compare the three big kit vendors to okay and we had ericsson week before haven't we yeah um okay well we'll do that <laughs> and and then just to remind you that if you're watching it on the site or on youtube or even facebook slash meta 
Um, you can also listen to it on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud. Uh, Everywhere. I'm losing track How now. much have you had to drink? All those places. I know, I know. I'm, I'm going to have to just hand over while I have a little kip <laughs> in the corner. Say, not enough. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, actually, I've... 22 I've, minutes intro. <laughs> 22 minute <laughs> intro. There we are. Okay. Well, I better right. go on with it then, haven't I? Um, Dean. Yes. Hi. So <laughs> I'm going to... Hello, Dean. <laughs> By the way, Dean's on the podcast, everyone. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to read out one of your tweets um, from this week. I think I'm going to start with this one. You went to a thing, I think Ian might have gone to it as well, a Total Telecom Congress. I did, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and on your way, um, as well as looking forward to meeting people and just generally hanging out with telecoms types, um, you said you're hoping for less hashtag 5G wash. Is that a hashtag? I'm trying to make it. It is now. Right, you're trying to make it. Um, More focus on telcos doing in-house R&D, less 2011 era whining about hashtag net neutrality and more hashtag private wireless. Mm. So why don't you just start by telling us why you sent that tweet and what you meant by it? Well, yeah, to be honest, the last couple of years, there's just been a never-ending stream of hype about 5G. And, and, yeah, I I think 5G is important, but one of the things is we've had over-promising consistently. You, know, you get hype with all technologies, but this has been on another level. And also, importantly, it gets picked up by politicians. It even gets picked up by all the crazies who thinks that because... Oh, tell the, me about well, it. Well, essentially, the industry has been saying f- 5G... Uh, literally, the, some people have said 5G is the most important thing since electricity. Yeah, which, yeah. Yeah, frankly, it's the most ludicrous thing about that. Definition of hype, isn't uh, it? Uh, and unsurprisingly, some people who are not technically the most... Abled, have run with it. It'll also save the planet, according yeah. to Ericsson this uh, week. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so so my my view is that first off, yeah, it's an important upgrade, but it's coming in phases, and everyone's been selling it on the benefit on the basis of things that won't happen for three to four years, even from now. Never mind three years ago, and that's if they work and if anyone actually buys buys them. Uh, and I think for now, five G is essentially sort of phase one. It's four G plus. So I'm getting pretty tired with just the constant, you know, bombardment with oh, it's one millisecond latency and it will run everything and your factory will be entirely five G and you and don't even get me started on connected or autonomous vehicles and mm. remote surgery remote and all the rest. Of it. <laughs> oh, I mean, I was a few mobile world congresses ago. I did that, and, and the guy, a very nice guy from King's College London, um, Misha Dola, I think oh, his yeah, name, yeah. he had a little flap, because he thought I was just sort of lampooning the whole thing, and I was just going, no, it's just hyperbolic, no one's doing I, any I goddamn remote he, surgery. He, he had this campaign where it was like a guy getting tattooed, tattooed remotely, or, yes, and I'm like, surely he would be like at home or in a parlor yeah. or where the machine is, but well, the other out ones, in the, the field. The, he was on, a, he was on a mountain, wasn't There's he? a guy on, on Mount Snowden getting yeah, a remote yeah. shave. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... Because uh, yeah, uh, that would uh, happen, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and to be honest, you don't need one millisecond for that. Even you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, you know, 10, 20, 30 right. milliseconds is probably enough. So you could do it with 4G. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, you and can do fact, remote shaving well, the with 4G. Is, most of most of what? today's 5G is 4G under the hood anyway. Why would you want to do a remote shave anyway? It sounds like no, something could go exactly. horribly wrong. Uh, that and really would be a killer it, application. Yeah. You really should have got the <laughs> fucking hanger shaving uh, and, right uh, now, shouldn't you? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> a real killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, and damn. Yeah. Uh, who? Who? Uh, who? You know, who's going to go to? In fact, even get your hair cut by a robot. Yeah. Mm. Right. We've had robotic coffee I makers. Robots and razors near me. I don't, That's yeah, not exactly. a winning combo yeah. for me. Exactly. No. Well, frankly, yeah, it was all this. It, it ties in with all this sort of hyper. Oh, robots are going to take all our jobs. Really? We've had robot coffee machines for the last thirty or fifty years. We've still got and baristas. We've got more baristas than ever. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, all this is you great. Need someone to push the button. Yeah. Oh no, God. Um, so anyway, someone so, to so make I was, a little heart in the froth. So I'm. I'm, I'm <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so I, yeah, I was, I was, I was quite pleased that they didn't oversell five G. And actually, some operators are better than others. So, yeah, Orange, for example, has come out and, and they say things like five G will be three times faster. I think I saw on one of their things a while back, and I'm like, actually, that's that's plausible. I'll buy that. Yeah. Whereas people go, oh, it's a hundred times faster mm-hmm. and one millisecond latency, and it's going to be everywhere. I'm like, well, yeah, actually, the one millisecond stuff isn't going to work through the wall. 
Who do, so, you, who yeah. do you think are the worst offenders? I mean, I, I, well, I don't want to put you on the spot. And I, I'll well, ask you to name operators, but is there anybody sure that sticks out that you think is is obviously the, the kit vendors are hyping it because they yeah. want to sell the equipment? But is there but anybody honest, on the spot? I think the governments, governments yeah, of the yeah. world hype it. What, what, yeah. I, I remember, you know, sort of one one thing I went to in in Brussels a few years ago, and they were saying, "Oh no, five G is going to have this absolute. It's going to be ubiquitous." I'm like, "It's not." Yeah, mm. We're in an underground hotel room, and I can bet you a tenner you that I mean? if we come back Can't here, even get three G in here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, and there's this this, this trade off between the higher the performance, the worse the coverage is, um, yeah. and particularly indoors. So if you're sitting on your sofa, even if you've got your robotic shaver in the bathroom, <laughs> it'll be using Wi Fi. Yeah. If it's using anything. Fibre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I go yeah. fibre to the bathroom. There you go. FTTB. FTTB, yeah. Yeah, so so yeah, so I I, got, I I was quite pleased that it wasn't as oversold as it's been at some events that I've I've been to recently, um, and I thought that, that actually the other thing that was quite good was there was a, and it's perhaps because they had the keynotes were more from the sort of CTO yeah. background rather than CEO is they were actually talking a little bit more about stuff they're inventing, and I, I mean, so Vodafone I, I I was quite impressed with saying. We are by default going to look at whether we can build stuff rather than buy it. So that was our lead item last week yeah. from from the dinner we went to. It, it doesn't mean they're yeah. going to succeed, but they've actually spent some time and thought, you know, we can actually differentiate. And well, you know, obviously, the, the proof is in the pudding. But the attitude of we're going to try and build something is what the telecoms industry has been missing, frankly, for the last ten or fifteen years. There's all this griping, and this comes up to the point with the net neutrality thing as well. Most of the net neutrality gripes are. Excuse me, Mr. Regulator, we're dumb. Can you tax the tech clever people for us? Mm. Whereas, in fact, yeah. if you actually go and spend money on doing R and D and inventing things, or at least choosing the, the thing, differentiated things to to buy and resell, then you've got more chance of creating new services, new products, being different to the other operators. Where essentially, if you've got four operators in a country and they've all got Ericsson or Nokia networks, all got roughly the same cell grid, they're differentiating based on who they've managed to negotiate a content deal with and a slightly mm. different billing, billing and pricing strategy. So then you get into the, the venerable sort of dumb pipe utility type of thing. Which, yeah, that's the other thing. Is, is Firstly, I hate this term, dumb pipe. Two reasons. One is networks and packets of, of you know, IP packets are not fluids. They're very, very different. Um, and, and actually, any analogy which, which draws a... Uh, well, sorry, any analogy between a fluid and connectivity is wrong. Actually, between fluid and money is wrong as well. Um, and the second thing is, actually, ironically, pipes, it turns out, are very profitable. If you look at pipeline companies, right. you know, yeah. they're the people in the oil industry who all make money no, almost no matter what. Right. And they're also not that dumb. The, all the, right. If you think about the valves and pipes, and you know, ask Mr. Putin about um, pipes from yeah, uh, yeah. Russia and, and yeah, yeah. how dumb they are. Do you know what I mean? Well, the, the operators well, themselves are, are pretty profitable, aren't they? Most of them. It's not like... They, they, this sort of yeah. this all this whinging about Netflix recently because of Squid Game and they want to they think Netflix this this res- resurrected. I was this just going to mention yeah. that in the net neutrality rubbishy context. argument uh, yeah, about the, that was actually one of the more red yeah. cock um, things yeah. on television. Yeah, on yeah. There, there's, there's a guy. I mean, I know BT's trying to rekindle this this whole net. Well, neutrality BT did um, an interview with the Guardian uh, with Mark, between Mark Alera, who's CEO of the, yeah. of the consumer business, and he he was sort of suggesting they should be able to sort of pretty much what's going on in South Korea suggesting they should be able to charge Netflix again and that and and it's it's interesting because I was I mean this is on the record so I'm going to say it I was sitting next to Scott Petty at the dinner mm. that we went to and he pretty much shares the same view he was sort of complaining that Scott Petty's Vodafone by the way yeah. he's the sort of chief digital officer which I know is an expression you'll love Dean um, <laughs> but he <laughs> but he, he was saying that he was saying the same thing you know he was complaining that oh our revenues are flat and we have to spend all this money on on rolling out networks and, and Netflix doesn't spend it. Pretty much that was his argument, well, the, I think. Well, I'm not doing a all... disservice by saying by quoting him saying oh. that. But uh... I, I mean, it, 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 it staggers me, to be honest. Firstly, all the technology companies, whether they're Netflix or whether they're Facebook or Google, they spend huge amounts on whether it's data centers, they own half the subsea fiber yeah. around the planet. Yeah, they've got tons of engineers they do lots of research on everything from you know making energy efficient uh, equipment to designing their own chips to uh, you know, creating content and they've got and a cameras. ridiculous cash cow to yeah to fund um, it all but yeah i mean the other thing is the, the the hypocrisy here is every single operator uses the public internet yeah they've all got a website they do use customer service on. They're talking about their digital channels. Um, ironically, with net neutrality, the first thing that, that will get blocked is you probably find that BT would block Vodafone.com 
<laughs> yeah, and actually, the re- yeah. So it's like, yeah, be careful what rules you want to change because yeah. it might it might backfire. I, I, I even find the definition of net neutrality to be vague. It means one thing it, to it Americans, is, it is, and means, means another thing to Europeans. Um, yeah. you know, it, it, uh, loosely, if if someone put me on the spot and said define it. I'd say people think it means treat all traffic the same, yeah. but we don't treat all traffic. I mean, we we have we have different tariffs. You can get a hundred megabit per second tariff or a one gigabit per second tariff. Is that not in some way treating traffic differently? Mm. I mean, the- no, I'd say it's, it's a lack of differentiation on the access part of the network. Um, and it's trying to put filters in place. And I, yeah, I mean, I remember looking at this, this ages ago, and it's, I'm broadly aligned with net neutrality, except for what the, actually I think the EU came up with a good term with specialised services. But specialised services need to be special. Mm. That's, yeah. yeah. So if you're talking about a heart pacemaker and a monitoring app for it, it's special. Yeah. Fine. Prioritize it. And mm. in fact, you do have prioritization on home broadband for your phone line, you know, the, the, the PSDN, and for their on network video for their IPTV. And that's fair enough it's on, if it's on their, their service on their physical infrastructure. But yeah, there's other things. So streaming Squid Game is not special. Yeah, it is not no, special. It's just popular. But I think that's one of the problems of this argument is that the the, mm. the, the, the legislation that the EU's come out with about specialised services is quite hazy anyway, yes. and yeah. and the, there's an opportunity I think for Ofcom to try and do something with net neutrality and all this stuff about we should be able to charge Netflix by default is is a distraction from what they should be thinking it's about. It's a distraction and it's also likely to be dangerous because what happens when Netflix turns around and says, alright, we'll pay you 100 million but you pay us 200 million or else we'll block Squid Game for exactly. your subscribers and totally. we'll provide free advertising to your competitors. Isn't there even a How suggestion, like I think the last thing uh, that's come out in recent days yeah. was a suggestion that's, that Netflix might withdraw content from South Korea. Well, it becomes uh, which a, I think is brilliant. It yeah. becomes because a standoff, it, doesn't it? It becomes a battle. Yeah. Well, and then let, let's see. Let's see who holds the cards. There. I think four oh, percent of Netflix's customers are in South. Oh, five percent are in South Korea. And all the Koreans uh, are losing yeah. their shit. And, and they, they and they're all on bro- big broadband. Uh, no, or even better they're... for competition. They only re- withdraw um, Squid Game from SK Broadband because that's the one. Well, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's what they and do. Then and then everybody would go to yeah, the competitors. Exactly. And the other thing is, you know, Google used to run their. I, don't, I think I think they they either stopped it or, or, or limited it. Their fibre network in various bits of the US, I think Chattanooga and a few other cities. So Google, at least, and I'm sure the others have a fantastic understanding of the real economics of building and running networks. Yep. So they, might, they, they could just turn around to the regulators and say, you know what, we're just going to open source our spreadsheet. This is what it really costs yep. if you do it properly. Maybe um, this is one of the reasons they did it, to, to, to be sure. able to have that as a sort of backup. I, 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 There's I, normally a bit of a game yeah. of chess game. Yeah. 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 So I, I think that, that, that you yeah, yeah, you can you can construct arguments for and against it. I think the specialised services get out is fine as long as those those services are special. I've got no problems to someone giving pro- network priority to your heart pacemaker. Although frankly, that shouldn't be using the public internet. Yeah. Anyway. But. Yeah. C- can you? I might grab another beer as well. Yeah. Scott, well, I think we're going to get into um, Dean's ghost ship now. It's been sitting in the. It's been sitting in the. Um, the Yeti. What, the Yeti, on a bit of ice. It is crisp. Um, oh so one thing, actually, while I'm while I'm doing this to sort of pad out the segue, um, the talk of net neutrality and specialised service leads me on to a second Dean Bubbly recent tweet, where you said I'm increasingly of the opinion that you do like a hashtag, don't you? Uh, uh, well, I'm yeah. going to stop reading out the hashtags. Yeah, yeah. That 5G network slicing is the biggest strategic technology error. Uh, um, Error in the English sense, not error like era in American. Um, <laughs> error of the mobile industry since RCS and IMS. So, yeah, why is network slicing such a strategic technology <sighs> error? Right. So, for, for people who aren't aware, network slicing is the 5G suggested approach to creating sort of virtualized sort of different overlays within one network, which is, is not unusual in networking speak. So, if you've got an office... Um, network, you will have virtualized la- virtual LANs running on it. Yeah, all fire it, fair enough. But it's internal plumbing, and instead the telecoms industry is trying to come up with this idea of, you know what, we can sell Ford a slice of the 5G network to you know for their specific requirements, or you know, we'll sell a slice for gaming, or you know, a slice to government, or whatever, and, and we'll, we'll dynamically create slices. Um, with all these different characteristics, and that one's for m- extra mobility, and this one's more security, and that one's lower latency. And at one level, I think you know clearly the operators are going to need to 
have different capabilities running on 5G, you know, f- for their own purposes. You know, maybe it's they're partitioning their business and their consumer customers or wholesale for MV- uh, MVNOs. Um, or the, there's a particular dedicated set of resources for you know, ultra-low latency in future iterations. But this idea that Ford is going to turn around, you know, we'll have a slice, when actually Ford has probably a 1,000 applications running in 100 different places on 100 different networks, um, it just it's just baffling, and it to me it's another example of the of the telecoms industry taking, you know, perhaps a worthy example of internal technology and plumbing, and massively making it more complex and trying to turn it into a revenue generator when it hasn't even proved okay, itself. Okay, so I'm going to, um, in the short knowledge that you understand the actual sort of technicalities of it far better than I do, I'm going to sort of be devil's advocate and be the yeah, be the be the people who are marketing network mm. slicing. And they are marketing, let's let's pick your example of Ford. They're marketing as saying Ford, for its smart factories, will want a sort of low latency, high reliability, sort of robust th- um, thing for controlling robots. But then they might want another bit that's high on the on the broadband bandwidth. Mm. And, 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 and they can pick and choose that, and they can basically fine-tune the characteristics of the network for their yeah. industrial needs. Yeah. I would say on very, very fine localised applications, that might work. But actually, in that scenario, Ford will probably want a completely private network, and bits of it might be right, run by point. the operator. But then it's but would you get net- network slicing within that private network? Yeah, you wouldn't would need it, would you? Yeah, well, yeah. There would be some sort of engineering and prioritization, whether it's slicing. But this is yeah, the, the big picture. Oh, it's going to be the wide area, and even when we're so we're in this studio, what two walls from the outside outside world? Yeah, yeah. So frankly, the gating factor is we won't get signal in here anyway. So the idea of slicing it is irrelevant. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and uh, this is been the perennial problem for the last 20 years. I've got a bit of 4G. I've only got one bar. Though. One, one bar of 4G that. in here. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah so, so the perennial problem over the last 20 years has been the, op- uh, the, the telecoms industry trying to, quote, monetize quality of service, QoS. Um, and yeah, oh, we, we can guarantee five nines of this critical application. The problem is that network coverage is variable. And having 99.999% performance 70% of the time hmm isn't much use to anyone if you're a developer, unless you absolutely engineer engineer it precisely. And the gating factor on all of this, and particularly on wireless, is um, coverage and indoor coverage in particular. Mm. And so I remember, we'll I mean, the, years, the EE thing. Years, years, actually, funny. Yeah. I think it was somebody who used to. I think it was EE that they used to work for. I remember having a conversation with someone who worked in the, the the internal network department. They said all this stuff about quality service is great, but there's three problems I see. One, it doesn't work properly. Two, we don't know how to sell it. And three, the customers don't know how to buy it. No, other than that, <laughs> other than that, we're laughing. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, who is the QoS procurement manager at Ford or BBC? Yeah. There isn't someone. They'd have to, they don't even know they need that job title. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's going to have to be the, the, the lead time of actually getting, firstly, just to make, make sure, sure it all works, and then actually the commercials. And then if you're, a large organisation like Ford, you don't want to have to deal with a hundred operators around the world. You need a room full of lawyers just to negotiate your QoS contracts, let alone enforce them. And, yeah, and enforce them exactly. Uh, yeah. and, and the, How do you know it, when they failed? Well, what's the customer service function? I'm so, sorry, this is this is the CIO at Ford. My slice has failed. Yeah. yeah, can you imagine the, the the sheer headache of working out whose fault it is, especially in an open RAN era? fixing it. Meanwhile, they're losing a million bucks an hour. In fact, they'd rather have a private network with someone on site and, and a backup plan. This, this trend to private networks, though, with, especially with yeah. companies, I think Germany's a, a, really, a really good example of it, where they've even sort of yeah. sold Spectrum to, yeah. the, to, the, to, the, to people like Ford, where they can come along mm-hmm. and, and work with Ericsson or Nokia on, on the equipment side totally. and just manage their own thing. That's, that's clearly that, a massive threat that, to network slicing, isn't well, it? Well, is well, a, uh, yes, I think it is. Yeah, and I, I've been following private... Actually, f- first time I saw a small cell on an enterprise private network was 20 years ago. I remember seeing a small company called IP Access, which made small cells, and I've recently been bought by Mavenir. Mavenir, yeah. But it used to be owned by TTPCom um, up near Cambridge. And that's been on a slow burn. And it's been used on, like, maritime for ships and oil rigs and military for private cellular for a while. But in the last two years, particularly in Germany, US, UK, Japan, bits, bits of France, it's really sort of hit an inflection point. So if, I want, if you wanted to, you could probably get a 10 megahertz of spectrum for 100 quid for this building. Yeah. 
you know, Ofcom now has a whole bunch of bands that you can get in the UK for 4G, private 4G. And, and they're 5G. very low cost, aren't they? And they start at a very low cost. Level. And the yeah. German ones are designed for sort of campus networks, yeah. particularly manufacturing. Japan's got a different set of rules. US. The, what, one of the problems with the private wireless is everywhere's different. And so the type of private network you can build in the UK is a bit different to Germany and, and Japan. Yeah. But, you know, that's not the end of the world. Um, but I think that's that. Uh, and you might be slicing on those networks. But at the moment, you know, it's not, it's not that level of sophistication. And they won't be as um, bought into we must follow the 3GPP standards for it. They'll, do, they'll go to whatever vendor they have and say, we need to make sure, make sure that our robots don't interfere with our security cameras with our walkie-talkies. And they might use official network slicing or they might have something else that comes from the IT, IT world. So I think that that type of thing is going to be important. But the sort of the idea that across the country as a whole, you're going to slice up the 5G network. And the question then is, how many slices? Is it three, 30, mm, 300, yeah. 3,000 or 3 million? Because the, the, yeah, as soon as you start getting into larger numbers, you need a, a ton of automation, a ton of AI, and an algorithm which then becomes a single point of failure for everything, which is when you get a phone a phone call from the feds who, who want to have a word with you if you want to run your gaming on a separate slice to your yeah. critical infrastructure. So in, investing in it is going to be a massive deal for oh. operators if they're spending a lot of money on this now, and then we'd see this trend towards companies just doing their own <coughs> private wireless thing and the whole thing doesn't take off, then they're potentially just setting themselves <coughs> up for a big failure. Well, I, th- I think that, you know, the, the, it will be useful internally. Yeah, it's a way of yeah. segmenting resources internally, and that makes sense. But not something you can market. I don't think so. Yeah. Also, back to your point about how, how many slices are there. So we were talking just before we started recording when we were talking about you know 5G in areas in which it's overpromised and that mm. sort of thing. And there was the, the 5G triangle of like 2017 <laughs> or something where you basically had the three cardinal points of, of what 5G promises, which is enhanced mobile broadband, which basically means more 4G. IoT, which has got fuck all to do with 5G as far as yep. I understand it, it's just a thing in and of itself. Well, apparently MBIoT and LTE M are now 5G. Oh, the, 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 yeah. the, they redefined 4G technologies as 5G. Because 5G. They, exactly. yeah. they, uh, otherwise we'd just have a line uh, and not a triangle. Yeah. Well, 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 the thing is that they for- completely forgot about fixed wireless access, ironically, yeah. which actually was the, the most first, interesting one. The most yeah. interesting one. It's, <laughs> the, one, it's, it's the one currently thing, most It's currently the one. thing which 5G can do better than 4G by yeah. a considerable margin. Well, we, were bro- we were at Broadband World Forum a couple of weeks ago and that was one of the biggest things that people were chatting so about there. So it should have been a square at the least or they should have booted out the IoT stuff. Well, they should have been, uh, and then the third one was this um, low latency. Oh, yeah. you know, and even back then, even with my sort of relatively dilettante, certainly compared to you two, understanding of of this stuff, I could see that that was the only novel thing. Mm. Was the low latency, high um, reliability. reliability, that sort of thing. Um, and now we're still. So I mean, I'm going to that, quickly. That's still not here yet. We're I mean, still not here. So there was a thing that you flagged up, a very short story I wrote because it was a very short press release. Um, but that was this week. Um, headline: E devotes some of its new 700 megahertz spectrum to indoor 5G. Now, this isn't this isn't necessarily mm. a um, a low latency thing, no. but it's it's a, another measure. I think you made a point, and, I, and I'll, I'm not going to paraphrase you. I'll ask you to sort of repeat it if you can remember. But you made a point about um, the sort of staggered way in yeah. which 5G is delivering, and this seems like an example of it. So. You know, we're hearing about even mid-band, let alone millimetre wave, and we might get onto millimetre wave. Um, they're a great idea. There's a lot more spectrum mm. real estate there, but we know the propagation characteristics, once you get above, much above sort of um, two gigs or whatever, uh, start. well, I mean, obviously it's probably linear, but, you know, sub one gig is great for propagation, then it gets worse mm. as you go further up. Get to mid-band, that's worse. Get to millimetre wave, it's shite. Um, and, uh, and now they've got to... They, they won some 700 megahertz spectrum in an auction and they're using it f- to basically make 5G get inside buildings is, is the best of my understanding of it. But let me hand it back to you. I just sort of trailed. Elaborate on your point about how 5G is sort of delivering on its promises it's, in stages. It's phased. I mean, so, so you look at the, the release. The, yeah, essentially, the 5G isn't monolithic. There are s- multiple generations of 5G technologies. If you can call it, think of it as, you know, version 1, 2, 3. It's actually 3GPP released 15, 16, 17, 18. Uh, so we're on 15 at the moment. We're, we're on 15 part 2. 
right. at the moment, right. which is yeah, and, and it, which essentially release fifteen was get it out early. It's four G plus. It's still using the old four G core network initially. So like now non, you've non-standalone. got non standalone. Yeah. Now we're on the standalone, but still on release fifteen. Frankly, all the cool stuff starts with release sixteen. There's a little bit of coolness on on the sort of fifteen standalone. When's sixteen supposed to be coming out? Well, it's, it's been standardised, but it's not yet in full products. Yeah. And this is very interesting for the enterprises is that the enterprises will probably deploy that on their private networks before the operators deploy it on the public network. At the moment, operators are still going from NSA to SA with release 15. So I asked at the, the event on, on this week, is when are you going to have release 16 up and running? And I didn't get a proper answer. So my view is... Because cool. nobody knows. I think it's 2023. Right. Yeah, and, and so if you like, day one for the cool stuff, even in theory on 5G, is 2023 in most of the world. Um, and everything so the marketing departments have got another year of yeah. just sort of chucky stuff out there. <laughs> yeah, there's, and there's bits and pieces. Yeah, it's nice. You can get fast downloads and the rest of it. But, other, but all of the particularly, anything that talks about one millisecond is years away. Yeah, and, and to actually commercialise it and have that reliably across a large area is pie in the sky. Because it's actually, even it, you won't even get one millisecond on the mid-band or low-band because of the, the rules, of the spectrum rules. Yeah. So, so yeah. but is the is the is really six? I mean, you said the really cool stuff. Is it even really that cool? Nah, I mean, is it is just, it going to come along? It's, and, the, it's and the big. It's the beginning of the. Yeah, it's yeah. when well, we had this expression being churned out a little bit yeah. at, um, at Broadband World Forum, even though it wasn't a five G mm. event. People sort of mentioning real five G. <laughs> you know, this what we've got yeah. at the moment isn't real five G. No. It's just souped up four G. When point, real five G comes along, things are going to be wonderful. It's, it's ver- and, we're on version zero point nine at the moment. We're just getting right. to version one with standalone. Yeah, and that's like version two and version three you'll get progressively more features and so we get halfway through the you decade get tattooed in the field yeah that won't stop people but, like AT&T calling it 5.5G but as I, soon as they get half the chance. I just wonder whether the because the story at the mm. moment has been very much about um, you know they're sort of selling souped up consumer services really I mean it's not even souped yeah. up consumer services it's just it's just you have a 5G phone and it works a little bit faster but you're probably not going to notice anything and you might get slightly um, bad coverage at the edge of the cell you might get better coverage yeah. yeah all, all which yeah. is yeah, it's incremental and, and then there's that story with on the operator side where mm-hmm. Okay, I, I get it to some extent that, that it's more efficient yeah, and and, okay. and it's a better way of supporting capacity increases than 4G. So you can do economic flat yeah. rate, flat flat rate. Yeah, yeah, it becomes more of an economic. But, but then this story that they're that they're sort of um, coming out with that well, when the enterprise opportunity really comes along, that's when we're really going to sort of see growth. I'm I'm sort of. I'm very sceptical. I just, I, I, well, there's, I, there's a bunch of things. First off, the enterprises can do it themselves. The yeah. second thing is there's a whole tier of intermediate service providers emerging. So all the tower companies, um, some of the fixed operators, a bunch of systems integrators, every sort of outsourcing company on the planet is is jumping into helping enterprises with their wireless. That doesn't mean there's no role for the carrier um, as well, but it's going to be, oh, maybe they're doing, I don't know, free for all. Yeah, managed SIM cards or something like that as a, sli- yeah. as a, as a slice, as a, as a part of it. Um, so I think I think that's that's not as easy as it sounds to make money out of enterprise. And the other thing is, there just aren't the skills. Yeah, I, I would estimate roughly there's probably a hundred times more enterprise Wi-Fi engineers than enterprise 5G engineers. Yeah, and particularly if you start including slicing and millimeter wave and all the rest of it. Now, yeah, frankly, if you want to make money, you set up a training company. Um, yeah, because there's a massive skills gap, and yeah. so people. Are, yeah, Should we do that? Yeah, let's Just do it. Let's announce it. Now. There you go. Right. Yeah, we're done. Are, are you optimistic? Because we, we came in talking about the Vodafone mm. software plan. You know, this recruiting, yeah. not recruiting really, actually adding and retraining, but eventually sort of having a, a software team that's yes. that's about. What it would it be? So they've got, they got nine thousand at the yeah. moment. They're adding another seven. Yeah. So sixteen. But, but I mean, because I, I've, I mean, we Scott and I both went yeah. to the press conference on that, and, and Johan Weiberg was pretty much talking the same thing at the event this <laughs> week. And I, I and I, I'm Great kind steak. of positive yeah. about some aspects of that. And I, I, I <laughs> talked to the the guy who's head of software engineering at Vodafone late in the day as well. And a lot of it seems to be about you know, not buying as much mm. from OSS vendors, for instance, working with Netcracker, for yeah. example, which I think he gave as an example, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and contributing more of their own intellectual property on that. And then they can, and, then, and Scott Petty said this at the dinner we went out, they can kind of cut what they're spending on systems integrators and take more responsibility. But the bit I'm, I'm more sort of dubious about is whether 
we'll see innovative services coming out of what they're doing um, there and, and whether it'll lead to growth for, for operators. To, to be honest, but, I'd say it's necessary but not sufficient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's a good start. I, th- I think it's, it's essential. And I think taking ownership of some of the technology stack is, is yeah. important. It doesn't mean that they'll be able to recruit the best developers or the most you know, innovative ideas, but it's, it's a good start. Yeah. yeah, and, and yeah, if you, you, I, and I think that if you look around the world, there's some op- other operators have taken a similar approach. AT and T has, I'd say, Geo, obviously Rakuten as well. Yeah. You know, so getting a bit more hands-on with the technology, I say not just software, but frankly, they they should be doing it with silicon as well. Um, right. Okay. okay yeah. If, if you look at the, one of the differentiators for Apple at the moment, and also Facebook and Google, is doing their own design work on, on chips. Yeah. yeah, they've all got, you know, how, how many operators have, have an ARM development license? Yeah. For example. So I think that, the, but again, it's a start. And well, I that's think a whole yeah, new yeah. area of skill set they got again. To, to, but it's, it's part of... I mean, like of, Apple, for example, bought yeah. a... Yeah. A chip, what was it, PI well, something or other? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, SoftBank owned ARM, but yeah, which is probably, probably yeah. the, 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 done much of it, have they? No, no. Well, I mean, to be honest, it was one of the most interesting acquisitions over the last five, five, ten years. I thought. Do you think uh, Nvidia should be allowed to buy ARM? Um, that's well, a real tangent. It is. It is. It's <laughs> an interesting one. one. I don't. I, I squarely don't. I um, think, it, and I'm a, I'm a less a fair kind of guy, but I think that's taking the piss. Um, I think there's some interesting conflicts of interest with other chip developers. For totally, that. yeah. Um, so there's definitely some competition issues. There's also some sort of UK sovereignty issues if you want to go down that path as well. Yeah, but they were kind of thrown out the window with SoftBank. Well, they? exactly, yeah. So um, the difference for me is SoftBank's not not a chip company. Mm. Nvidia is. It's really as simple as that for me. So the I'm competition. Gonna the first person to. You're going to go off and uh, to, to do have a little thing. visit. Um, one thing I was going to uh, flag up, back to your point, Dean, about um, the sort of staggered mm. rollout of 5G. One of our most read stories this week was, uh, the headline was, Ericsson raises its low latency game. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, a, it was a, a press release they sent out about some new software suite they've got, which, can only, which, which you've got to buy, and it's only available to people who've got their RAN um, thing, their RAN portfolio. But basically what it does is it sort of, it makes, it seems to make the low latency promise a bit more real. Mm. And that completely feeds into your point about the staggered rollout because, you know, we talked about the triangle earlier and low latency part of it. We've been promising low latency. And I was like, well, then why do you need a special bit of software with all these promises we made about it? Well, yeah, quite, I, I mean, I, I haven't seen the full details of that, that particular Ericsson announcement, but you know, it may well be that they have managed to prioritise that bit of release 16 ahead of time. I don't know. But, well, I'll tell you, actually, yeah. just to butt in, because I, I can sort of inform it a little bit, I, I, did, a, I did a sort of little Q&A with um, an Ericsson exec called Marie Hogan, who's um, head of mobile broadband mm-hmm. voice and new business at Ericsson. She's got a fairly broad portfolio, hasn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I just sort of went, you know, wh- why do we need it? I thought we already had it. Uh, and she goes, this is quoting her. Um, where is it? Oh, yeah. Current mobile networks, including with 5G, are built for mobile broadband type of services, optimizing for data rates or high throughputs without any guarantees regarding latency. And then she went on to say, in contrast, time critical communication is designed, and I think she's got that in capital, so yeah. maybe that's the name of their their software is designed to secure data delivery within specific latency bounds blah 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 and go uh, and, and just sort of bigging it up so the long and short of it is she's saying that 5g as it is now is a bit shit for low latency to paraphrase her but we've but we've made it not shit um possibly yeah um oh, actually as you said that and i'm I say this is without me having spoken to ericsson about it so i don't know I think there's a different reason for that story okay. and for that and for that launch, which is one of the things everyone's been banging on about about Open RAN has been it turns the radio network into making it more programmable and allowing you know software upgrades for this and that. And so costly, this is Ericsson coming back and saying, "See, we can do software upgrades ourselves right. on our own." Integrated network. Whereas and if I, you go open, Ren, you don't they're, get they're, any. It's like it's like, well, it's like well, they're promising it for the future. We're doing it now. Yeah. So so maybe maybe this is Ericsson saying, you know what, we've got our own 
you know, programmable software upgrade program. I don't know. I'm completely, completely no, but, but it's, but it's a good point, and and you know, it's a central theme within the whole of the telecoms, well, certainly the vendor side of things. Is this open RAN versus, mm. you know, and, and the and the and the sort of vendor lock in thing, which you know, lots of people have done a good job of demonising, but we always end up making this comparison, which might be spurious with mm. Apple. Or is it, are you an iPhone user or yeah, an Android? Yeah, I'm, I'm an Android. So you're an iPhone user, and, and, and you will appreciate, especially being as technologically savvy as you are, that there are certain trade-offs. Yes, you're bought yeah. into the iTunes ecosystem, but you've got something that's harmonized, hardware, yeah. software, services. I, I don't think it's spurious. Uh, that's, that's an example the operators would give themselves. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. right. Well, maybe uh, I'm yeah. selling myself short there. Then. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, 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 fair enough, I, I like, I like products rather than ecosystems. Yeah. So I've got an iPhone... But I have a Microsoft Surface laptop. I use Google for certain things. Mm. I use Twitter for certain other things. Yeah. And so basically, I don't want to be some sort of yeah. digital live in a cave. Well, I'm with you. I'm sort of the other way around. I've got an Android phone, but I use iPads at home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and so I'll, I use I'll, a, a I'll, Windows I'll, PC. But yeah, but the point is that, that Apple is able to integrate the whole thing and optimize. There are advantages. Oh, oh, exactly. Totally. Yeah. Totally yeah. agree. And that's the Ericsson, Nokia, old kit vendor uh, and, model. And yeah. it's not to be sniffed at. And I, and I, I think, again, yeah, Open RAN has got some interesting potential. Uh, I was I was actually moderating a panel. I know. I was going to ask you about that because I, yeah. I I wasn't there that stage in the afternoon. And and, <laughs> and, and I, pub, I, I wasn't down the pub. I was trying to get something <laughs> written out, but I did want to go to your to your session that, in a way. That, that session didn't, was, so. was different to all the other right. Open RAN ones that I've run because it actually it was had I had an academic from Queen Mary's. Right. I had someone from Bell Canada, and I had um, someone from um, an OSS BSS vendor, Comarch. Yeah. And rather than the normally when you talk about Open RAN, it's all about oh. Yeah, you know, this is about you know diversification of the supply, yeah. event more vendors, and all this sort of thing. This was much more about c- can we align Open RAN with network slicing? Mm. Which, which right. uh, that's, uh, that's uh, a question, isn't it? Uh, and, well, uh, and the answer seemed to be from the panel of maybe, but not for five years. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it was, was roughly. <laughs> so I, don't I, take I the Forget about network um, slicing. <laughs> and as we've said on the pod before, and other people have said, I'm, I'm uh, interested to see what you think about it, Dean, but. It seems to be generally accepted that Open RAN as a viable technology is a 6G thing. Um, I, I think so. I, I think I think there's a couple of exceptions. If you're a greenfield network, you know, like Dish or Rakuten, you know, and, and the phrase I heard was they're brave, but it's good on them. Go yeah. for it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it probably works for existing operators in let's call them secondary deployment scenarios. So if you've got no coverage in the middle of Wales or something, you think, well, I've got to do this for my for my license commitments to keep the government happy. So if I can try out this new stuff and do it on the cheap and without, you know, choosing it, and, and I can experiment with some new vendors on you know, uh, without sort of perhaps the publicity down downside if, if the network goes down at Oxford Circus. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a Londoner, so I'm I can mm. be London centric unapologetically. That's um, fine. Uh, and we're in London. Yeah. So yeah, I think that the operators will use it for maybe for some infill capacity for remote areas for rural. Oh, we've got an island that we haven't got a network on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think that's like an extended beta test, and you know, yeah, if, assuming everything goes well, prime time for six G. And the other side to it is that that's also when this programmability. There's a a bit of open round called the RIC. In fact, there's two 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 RICs. In, in the full architecture, which essentially allows you to plug in third-party software to the radio network, which could be for low latency, it could be there's a module for, I don't know, radio connectivity for drones or whatever, yeah, optimization for power consumption. That, the programmability aspect, I think is a good idea. Now, whether that software is from, you know, Drone Radio Inc. or whether it's like Ericsson's own brand, yeah. you know, drone control, Frankly, I haven't got a view on. Yeah, it's, we'll see how that that turns out. But I think that that type of modularity is 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 not a bad thing at all. But it's going to take a while because you know there's lots of dependencies. Everyone's going to want to test the hell out of it for a long time. Yeah, particularly if it then touches on other areas of regulated mm. industries like air traffic control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and if if you're talking about them trying to monetize quality mm. of control, why why introduce an element that's going to diminish? Well, quality of control, so it's yeah. a big, it's a high uh, risk. It's a high, move, high risk. Isn't it? I, I mean, I think to the t- in the UK, probably the most open ran skeptic of the operators is BT or EE, yeah. uh, and that's probably not unconnected with the fact that they're doing the emergency services network. Well, I think they've even mentioned that, yeah. haven't they? As yeah. one, of the, as one yeah, of the drawbacks. Yeah, but. and I know the US Department of Defense is is, is mad keen on some of this, yeah. but, but that's yeah. just because they well, got the RCA. I mean, yeah, another Chinese. thing they said was, and I've written a little bit about this recently, was lack of lack of sort of support for, for older technologies, two G yeah. and three G. 
in. And, yeah. uh, and and I know some of the vendors, and you, you mentioned IP Access earlier, yeah. which Mavenir bought, I think, specifically to try yeah. and get 2G um, and 3G expertise. Absolutely. But I, I mean, I asked Nokia last week when I was writing the story I wrote, mm. do you, does your open, because they say we've got mm. a full open RAN portfolio now, does it support 2G, 3G? No. No. You know, uh, Ericsson doesn't market anything. Huawei well, doesn't market anything. I Samsung mean, doesn't have 3G well, support. Well, it's, if, it's if, you're, kind of, if you're Samsung and you've got an R&D budget, do you really want to put a team of engineers on doing GSM? Exactly, yeah. yeah and and Altia Star is another one that doesn't yeah. have have either 2G or 3G in its portfolio, which apparently is one of the reasons they're being swapped out of Telecom Italia's uh, uh, very small uh, open RAN deployment. And some markets are trying to switch off to accelerate switch off of 2G and 3G, which is great until you realise that half your smart meters are running on it and, and, yep. and all your IoT that you've put in sewer systems and yeah. all the rest of it yeah which is which is you can try and swap that stuff out but that's a big project yeah i mean i think 2g and and, and the operators seem to think this as well they'll just be around yeah. for, for a couple of decades potentially oh, because I, it's because there's so the much common, tied up it's with the lowest it. common denominator yeah um so I, I tend to agree on that yeah. but um yeah so i yeah I, I, again i i think open ran is is interesting i also think that it's not going to take off overnight i think that there's a lot of question marks about the you know, it seems to work fine. We'll, let's 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 see Dish run an entire network on it in Rakuten. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think that it's going to take a while before people fully trust it. Then you get into the stuff that Daniel Royston was talking about: is do you run it on the private cloud or public cloud? Yeah, um, which is a completely different different discussion. Yeah. So yeah, it'll it'll come over time. Yeah, I, I, th- I think that the, I mean it would help more perhaps if things were R- Rakuten's become a sort of poster boy for it, hasn't it? In a way, and um, hmm. that deployment has lots of question marks over it I think at the moment because it's turned out to be a lot costlier than they anticipated I mean they wouldn't be selling bits of Rakuten to, to they, they didn't have that mm. in the original plan they've had to build a lot more base stations than they yeah. intended they've had to and they've not had the customer base uh, I and think they've, they've got and with w- this symphony thing so actually yeah. I- ironically yeah, and, and, and you know what I was saying about um, operators doing R&D to be honest Rakuten may end up being more of a um, vendor device vendor or device <laughs> yeah. ref- which to yeah. be fair Rakuten Inc is yeah. a cloud company yeah yeah so actually yeah. Rakuten has always been sort of you know Japanese mini Amazon exactly yeah roughly or, or, or eBay or, or, or whatever um, so yeah, to some extent they're coming from a different background anyway well they're a company wouldn't you know, we're talking about operators getting mm. involved in chip development for instance yeah. and they they almost are I mean I've spoken yeah. to Tarek Amin totally. who's the CTO on the mobile side and he's talked quite a lot about his interest in the components side, side of the, stuff So, but the difference is that Rakuten is a cloud company that got into telecoms yep. rather than a telecoms company getting into cloud yeah yeah, yeah you could possibly say the same with SoftBank actually as well yeah, indeed yeah yeah. I'm going to butt in because we're probably been going about an hour in it. Um, so we've got to talk about. <laughs> we some did other have stuff. a thirty-minute preamble. Yeah, no, that's totally my fault. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not pinning. I'm not saying you <laughs> two we, we, fucked we, up. We were, we were <laughs> talking about stuff to do with telecom. I think. Yeah, yeah, no, preamble, no. So, yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. It's all good. Don't don't, don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying. It's just so good. I'm yeah. not saying I'm going to butt in because I don't know like what you're talking about. The I'm nice thing saying, about being someone else's podcast or presentation is. I don't have to be in charge of the timekeeping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone else will do it. And and I'm sure you appreciate how absurd it is to have me in charge of any kind of discipline, let alone time discipline <laughs> and podcast. But there we go. I'm I'm the one who's landed it. So I'm going to move it on. Um, and uh, I still, do you know, I'm still trying to find that LinkedIn post where that bloke had a pop. It's there's something wrong with LinkedIn. I mean, it just, should be obvious to me. Just type Andy Jones in. Just let it go. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and click on him. And, and it'll yeah, it's he's, no, he's, I'm just more curious exactly, about why... He is quite he's a, he's prominent. A, yeah, he's a, he's a consultant. He, he, I mean, he took issue with something I wrote because I had a go at the, the UK government's no, open rants I'm, and I'm all for people. And, and, and I have a feeling he's involved in advising the UK government to some extent on its telecom strategy. Oh, no wonder he's butthurt. And, and, and I, t- I, I basically had a go at it, so he wasn't very happy about it. And now even more people know about him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's but he's quite well well yeah, known. He's yeah. pretty prominent. No, I'm it? more curious. Other than the fact I'd like to sort of give it a like or something just to do his head in. Nah. Um, I I'm just more curious as to how you found it, and I didn't. When I'm because I, I think I'm connected thing. with him on LinkedIn. Uh, he, he, yeah, even okay. though he he sort of. Um, uh, to be honest, I, yeah, no. I, I don't mind people if if, if people no, are being opinionated. Well, I'm all for it. And, oh, no, with interest. It doesn't it doesn't bother me. No, totally, totally. I mean, What's that's the thing. Percentage? Well, you get some people who can get a bit precious. They're like, well, I don't like this. And then you go tough shit. And they go, no, you need to accommodate me more. <laughs> My feelings. Yeah. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> so uh, there we go. That's my... <laughs> That's my 50-year-old uh, take on, on people's feelings. 
Um, oh. What else are we going to talk about? So we talk about Facebook, but not that thing that got Andy Jones all aerated. Um, we're going to talk about the story that broke up yesterday evening and I wrote up today. Uh, and my headline was, uh, Facebook addresses its tarnished image with meta rebrand. Now, the, the top line is that Facebook um, has decided it's now called meta. Yeah, except um, nobody will ever refer to it as well, meta. Totally. When no one refers to Google alphabet. as alphabet. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, and, and I made that exact point in uh, when, I, when I wrote it up. No one calls it. So uh, Pierre's just shared a meme that says, which has got um, Lawrence Fishburne in Morpheus. The Matrix, Morpheus, <laughs> going, what if I told you giving yourself a new name doesn't change the fact that you're a cancer to the world? <laughs> it's a bit harsh. Well, actually, do you know what? <laughs> it is a bit that, harsh, that kind yeah. of feeds into some of the interesting stuff that's been going on about Facebook, which, is, which refers back to that previous piece I wrote that's got so many people's noses out of joint. Facebook, yes, yes, maybe is a cancer to the world, but all Facebook really is is a platform on which people do people mm. stuff. I, I so, tend to agree. I, to be honest, I, yeah, I think Facebook's done some pretty dodgy stuff. But if I had to pick some villains, it's more like you know, you know, what the people I really hate is the gazillion companies who put cookies on your computer. Yeah, yeah. The, the list, mm. all, all these yeah. nameless. That's ad a, tech, that's a ad favorite tech um, Twitter theme of yours. Is just people taking the piss digitally. Isn't it? I've seen uh, you. I've seen you bring that up a few times. Yeah. Digitally, no. Uh, yeah, well, well, like, like, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> like, like. I mean, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Stop I, do, it. I, do, Stop I, do, it. I do have a thing about the word digital. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I always think it's like rubbish. remind people that that, that <laughs> digital technology predates mains electricity. Yeah, it's like 1842 yeah. with Morse code. It's like yeah, well, and it's digital a 19th, 19th century. And digital also means fingers, which, well, which yes. has all uh, sorts I, of dual entendre potential. Well, I would say the only people who could, should be talking about digital strategy are proctologists. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> good, good one. Um, so uh, yeah, so I know I know that annoys you from from following you on Twitter. Yeah. But I mean, you know, one one point I made so. So they've rebranded Meta, mm -hmm. and I th I, my analysis was there's two main reasons. One, as I alluded to in the headline, is that the Facebook brand is is not great, and one of the one of the reasons is the recent Francis Horgan stuff. But also, Facebook I think has got a really aging user base. It's not bringing yep. on younger people. It's a bit you know people Instagram for kids. Yeah, well, and they've got this one of the leaks that originally came from Francis Hogg and stuff that a Wall Street Journal wrote up was hmm. was that they're targeting kids for Instagram, and well, they might. Well, I mean, to be honest though, it's it's like their main business within the group. In future, you're right. You know, the blue Facebook, you know, social network is if not declining, then less prominent, partly yeah. because of of the association that it's got with you know, misinformation and stuff like that. But well, actually, the, young the, people don't use it. My kids yeah, just yeah, dream of it. Yeah, frankly, yeah. In, Instagram is cooler. WhatsApp is more useful for a lot of things. Um, I, I don't use Facebook Messenger. I use WhatsApp all the time, though. Right. Um, Oculus And you bet you signal as well, don't you? Um, no? I, I got fed up with signal. I've got <laughs> signal and telegram on my phone, but I, I can't. I think I stopped. Okay, I, so, you, I, so I, WhatsApp's I, your main IM... Yeah, I, I, I'd say WhatsApp and, and I guess iMessage with people who've got iPhones. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, the, the main ones. Um, and then actually, actually, you and I message on Twitter DMs half the time. That's true. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it depends. Yeah, it's very context specific. No one but, ever used Facebook Messenger though, do they? I don't. No, I haven't got it. It's called my phone. I, 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 I actually I, do use. Facebook I refuse to install a second a second yeah. app on my phone. Well, I don't have it's it on like, the phone, but I, I use it yeah. on online with. Uh, the, yeah, yeah. there's WhatsApp, work. which is them yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I know. I use that. Yeah. It did seem absurd for the two things to exist in parallel, but then again, informal bought like reading and the two exist in parallel, so <laughs> it can work. See now, I wonder if companies like ByteDance, who owns TikTok. Will like who will they acquire next? Hmm. Like, are they going to get a second app? Like, yeah, you mean, is Facebook, Facebook going to acquire by that yeah. business? That, no, no, that no. social right. network business is mm. it's always more. It was out of if you look at all the tech companies, I think, and, and Go yeah. Google makes all of its money pretty much still from search engines, does it from the search yeah. engine business? It, 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 it seems to be a much harder thing for other companies to crack that than it has for a new social network to come along. And you yeah. look at b back before Facebook was around, it wasn't original, there were things like Friends Reunited, weren't there? Which is oh, which is big at one stage, and then all of a sudden that. Facebook came and it Friendster. disappeared. Friendster. And, 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 and MySpace, and MySpace, MySpace yeah. obviously, yeah. And MySpace was the other, yeah, yeah that was bigger than Friends Reunited. It was big until Rupert Murdoch bought and then went down the toilet. Yeah, but also no, Face Facebook came and they just basically ran away mm, with stuff. Just needs Verizon to buy it. It'll be all right. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> or AT and T. That guy, the founder, what, what is his name? The MySpace founder. I can't remember. He, s- he made out with like nine hundred million. And he's just, laughing. Yeah. No, he's just he's a photographer. He, yeah, totally. in the world. Well, yes. it's, it's a bit like my old boss who made out selling to certain companies' office I'm in at the moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably I should probably give him where I am now. Yeah. Well, right, um, I think Ian, Ian's old boss could tell you a similar story. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so yeah, yeah, I, I think that actually for Facebook. This actually makes a reasonable amount of sense. I, I, I mean, yeah. I think some of the hype around this metaverse thing is a bit overdone. But actually, can you tell me what it is? Actually, because I'm not sure. Well, so that was is. just going to lead into yeah, that. So, it's, if it's you don't mind, second life. So, re- so the first point, first point of the rebrand <laughs> is that Facebook itself is a bit shite. But the second point is to pivot to mm. use a corporate term mm-hmm. towards the metaverse. So, w- what is the metaverse? I hear you ask, Pierre. The metaverse is sort of. Augmented reality and virtual reality, primarily. It's Ready it, Player One. That sort of thing. It's basically it's really a more Gibson. immersive digital world. It, it, it's yeah, it's yeah, yeah. basically, it goes all the way back to William Gibson. The, yeah, and the Neuromancer. Whole, uh, Neuromancer yeah. and the birth of I don't know this. Fun. What's this? It's, it's basically, you, you don't read enough books. No, yeah. I don't. I'm very it's, bad it's at reading books. It's basically the internet. He writes them. The internet. <laughs> yeah. Cross, yeah, exactly, Ian. <laughs> 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 it's the internet crossed with virtual reality, right. uh, and 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 that's where this term, yeah, whether it's metaverse and I can't remember if it was Gibson or um, yeah, Stevenson or one of the other cyberpunk authors who, who originally came up with the term. But yeah, this has been the vision of connectivity since the 1980s or 1990s of you know, the sort of visual depiction of some cyberspace. It's a bit like what the was Matrix. the Stevenson one? You've, Cryptonomicon uh, the, or something. Cryptonomic, or, there was yeah. um, Diamond. Diamond. Was it Diamond? Age? Yeah, yeah. Um, Diamond Age, I think. Yeah. yeah so the, the, there was there was a whole whole slew of books and, and, and <laughs> authors. Hashtag nerds. Yeah, uh, but it's uh, but also like the Matrix and everything else. Right? I like the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't yeah. have to read that. <laughs> But Ready Player, Ready Player One is a book yeah. as well. So, I like so, Matrix and I like Terminator. So, so, so we're, and we're now roughly at the point where it, we're, we've had the internet and the web since the 90s. We're now roughly at the point where you can do half decent virtual reality or augmented reality yeah. and the connectivity at the same time, and it works. And so, I, it? yeah, I... Yeah, well, it's getting there. Yeah, it works. That's uh, so requires I, I, a lot of qualification, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, 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 it does. But it, but this, so did the web in 1994. So I could. I, I think. So you're saying a, you're saying it's an equivalent sort of early stage of the. Yeah, yeah and, and, and you don't want to be the old guy. Be like, oh, this will never work. It's not. It's not guaranteed. And people have tried to do it since the 1990s. But I remember I wrote a report on virtual reality in 1994. Um, and I said it's probably going to be about 30 years before it comes real, and I reckon that actually right. might have been bang on. Um, <laughs> um, Whereas I, I can remember as a, as a devices specialised journalist saying that tablets will never take off. So uh, my, my <laughs> well, I, said well. I, I, I said that as well. I well, said that as well, actually. I said it's just a big, it's just a big <laughs> oh, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. iPod. Uh, all 50-50s is a freak of the prediction. I said, what's the point? <laughs> Genius. Yep, I, big no, fan, no, isn't it? I think I did that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, me a couple. But, but, um, that, but that is also, yeah. you know, to to um, I don't know, uh, exculpate our style of journalism slash yeah. being an analyst. Yeah, yeah. you got to you got to stick your neck out sometimes, well, and I, you're not going to get all of them right. I, and the thing is, I get to call my, I sometimes get to call myself a futurist as well. So so if <laughs> I put my my futurist Whoa. hat on, I'm looking at yeah, ten years yeah, or twenty yeah. years. Actually, Remember when AT and had that futurist with that mad haircut? They had this guy who called himself much. a futurist or something like that, oh. and his hair was, was all yeah, over the shop. I know you mean. He just on, on the on the metaverse stuff yeah. though, because um, it's very much been associated with Facebook recently. And I don't hear any. And I think the commitment to it financially is huge. They're saying they're going to spend ten billion a year on this in R and D alone, on just on the oh, metaverse. Oh, yeah, but they bought Oculus. But to be honest, actually, the more interesting one is Microsoft. Right. Uh, and okay. Microsoft hasn't been banging on about. And I don't think they've started talking about the metaverse per se. But they've got what is it, twenty billion dollar contract with the department. The defense to do the hololens. Is that metaverse word though? Is that something that Facebook's just come up with itself? Uh, they're, trying to, they're trying they're to trying associate to sort of, themselves with it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been and around for this while. rebrand. It, it's been, it's been around since the 90s. I know, or I'd never, to be honest, with you, it probably shows how, how yeah, sort it, of uh, not uh, not aware of certain things I am. But I, the first I'd heard of it was when Mike Dana wrote an article on it a few months ago. Yeah, he was like, yeah, okay, it's, it's metaverse. Like, it's, it's, to be honest, it looks like someone's been a geeky word. Yeah, it looks like someone's been going through their their old sci-fi books and their on the bookshelf and gone, oh, yeah. that'll do. Yeah. Um, William Gibson yeah. probably mentioned it. Well, I can't remember Gibson or yeah. Stevenson. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been around for a while. Yeah. And the, you know, people have probably put every every combination of world and universe and all the other things. They've gone through the, they've gone through 
the thesaurus and there's everything to do with, with like world so and gross. everything to do with, talking about, <laughs> with with sort of digital or meta or whatever well, i'm talking about thesaurus meta itself is really poorly defined i looked it up on on a dictionary and you know meta is in metamorphosis means change in, in terms in of meta is used in, in, in etymology meta but it humans. can also it can also mean in fact there was a um isn't superman a meta metaphor yeah well that so i, I embedded some tweets in, in my analysis and there was one from jack dorsey who obviously feels a degree of sort of competitive friction with um facebook because he's the twitter guy and he went meta colon referring to itself or the conventions of its genre self-referential so that was obviously meant as a little bit of a dig but there are the point, the point is that meta itself is ill-defined. And what is the metaverse? I mean, is it referring to change? Is it referring to self-referential? Is it referring to some other definition of meta? Because there are others. You mean it's metaphor? There we go. All right, so, <laughs> so I wonder what the etym etymology Gee, of metaphor you is. You can tell I'm doing an improv because, course, but yeah. <laughs> oh, are you? Yeah, yeah, Cool. Because yeah. um, meta comes up in an et etymological way if that's a word all the time it, mm. but we don't think about it. we don't think about what metamorphosis means but you know it, mm. it comes from a greek of something or other i i think there's something like this basically a visual representation of data and overlaying stuff visually yeah whether it's metaverse or we call it hololens or whatever it doesn't really matter mixed reality qualcomm likes extended reality it's extended it? reality mixed reality Mi uh, mixed reality is a bit xr is it is that yeah that's the yeah. qualcomm yeah. thing augmented God. mixed yeah, yeah yeah so so it's not bad as a brand uh, and also i think it's likely to be important um and i i, I did some, actually i put another tweet out a week or so ago which is uh, my, my guess is if you look back in 10 years time that metaverse type technologies will be more important than 5G or cryptocurrency and less important than AI or gene editing. Why do you think that? I mean, that's, a, that's a big old claim, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and, I, and I'm, I'm sticking saying, your neck out I'm here. pretty much sticking my neck out there. And I, it, was partly to, it, it was partly to wind up all the 5G and cryptocurrency people. <laughs> that's going to a problem. I was saying, if, if, if there's anyone who's... Easy, trolling like that. The, 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 if there's one, one group that's easier to troll than 5G, the telecoms people, it's crypto. Crypto. crypto yeah, yeah. Isn't crypto just going to be a part of the metaverse? It's, it's, it might be. Yeah. Uh, and some of the comments, oh, is the, the metaverse will depend on crypto. I'm like, well, it might be a bit of it, but yeah. I'm fairly sure you can create it. I'm pretty sure the US Department of Defense version isn't going to be crypto, crypto bound. Yeah. Um, your, out your outfits in the metaverse will be NFTs. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> mm. yeah. yeah, it all gets a bit crazy. I mean, I understand politically why people get excited about crypto, because... It supposedly allows uh, for a, uh, you to live your commercial life without the man intruding mm. in it. But I wonder how much that no, will be the case uh, but, in practice. So about three or four years ago, I had a bunch of clients who were sort of, this is the first rash of like cryptocurrencies and also blockchain. And so I did a bunch of work on what are the telecoms applications of blockchain. And the answer was boring stuff. And a lot of this is overhyped. So it might be settlement for roaming and things like that. Um, and the thing is that there are some interesting things with, with blockchains. You're starting to see them coming out now, and they're mostly things like roaming settlement and, yeah. and asset asset tracking, asset management. Uh, and, and everyone's like, oh, no, no, this is distributed trust and blah, blah, blah. So I have to say, for a technology which is all about trust, it attracts some of the least trustworthy yes, people the most on the planet, <laughs> some of whom are <laughs> owe me money for three or four years. <laughs> right. I've I mean, the Bitcoin <laughs> people, I, I follow laundering. some people. There's some like Bitcoin, I can't remember the names of them, but there's some people who are like on Twitter, intimately associated with Bitcoin, and they always look like snake oil salesmen, yeah. the way they conduct themselves. It's going themselves. to a million. I, 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 literally, I, I literally, I did a project for a company about, and it's something that it was like to do with sort of, oh, we can we do some multi-SIM MVNO thing? Um, and I have no problems with, frankly, I'm out of NDA and they haven't bloody paid me, so <laughs> screw them. Um, I, and I, I remember doing a presentation and it had about a million dollars worth of art in the room that I did the presentation in, and then the bastard didn't pay me. And that, oh, to damn. me, absolutely <laughs> summed up everything I needed to know about. This little disgusting. Actually, I, you know, people. <laughs> and that, that actually, a complete tangent, that just winds me up. When you're... When you're uh, so self-employed service provider as you are mm. for, for people to stiff you on what presumably wasn't a, was a, a life-altering huge... amount of money no. it's just a fucking piss take it really winds me up it's just like why be like that i mean that's just that's just vindictive it doesn't make any difference to your bottom line it doesn't actually matter it's just someone being a dick because they can god mm. that annoys me as you might might be able to I tell, tell. From the, from the uh, stress in so your voice. I feel your pain Brief. feel your pain um uh, so anyway, okay, so that was the, the metaverse thing. Is there anything else I've got to add about it? No, there were some fun tweets. I, I, I might read out some of them because they made me laugh. Some guy 
some American with a with a star spangled banner next to his Twitter handle, um, who's got about half a million followers, goes. Meta accomplishes only one thing. It allows Mark Zuckerberg to say he's not the CEO of Facebook. And then new paragraph, he goes, he will now do less controversial things like build a new virtual universe where he can be king while running Facebook, which I thought, you know, it, it just pointed to the skepticism. I'm seeing another guy goes, there's not a single person, in, I think he's quoting from an article, there's not a single person in existence who has scanned Facebook news feed and said, yes, Immerse me in this reality. I want to feel my uncle's meme about hot pockets on my face. And then the one that made me laugh out loud the most was someone going, the metaverse enables rioters to take a shit in the capital from the comfort of their home. So, so, so <laughs> Obviously the, referring to the 6th of January thing. So it's interesting. So I, I use Facebook, but I've got a sufficient number of you know, smart but wrong lefties on it and, and I'm absolutely <laughs> smart but wrong and I'm that absolute, defines most lefties and, and I'm, meh, I'm not so smart or something uh, but anyway so yeah I, fair point I, I'll align with you on, Just, on sort of general wrong. political leanings but I make sure that I don't live in a bubble and yeah I'll have and a rightly so. the rest of it and yeah and Frank and frankly, bubble in a bubble oh, oh yeah uh, oh, there we go oh I've never heard that one before yeah <laughs> <laughs> shit yeah we'll like, start huh. making air yeah. rage <laughs> Well done, that man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he doesn't need to do an improv course. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so so I, I think yeah, I understand the criticism of Facebook, but I, I equally at the same time, it is what it is. Um, you can work around it now. There's obviously there's a bunch of people who go deep down the rabbit hole, and I've known people who've gone down down from the tech industry who've gone down all sorts of weird rabbit holes over the last few years. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, on all sorts of extremist ideas and conspiracies and all the rest of it. And Facebook probably doesn't help, but there's plenty, to be honest, there's no shortage of rabbit holes if you want to go down one. Totally. And, and whatever yeah. the opposite of um, you know, moles popping up and whack a mole is, there's rabbit holes going down everywhere. And well, just f filling in one hole here and, and doesn't the internet, mean you're not going to have and a And the internet presents so many more rabbit holes than, just, than, than you had prior even, to that. Even some of the, I mean, coming off the metaverse stuff, some of the Francis Hogan whistleblowing just seems very kind of so what to me it's like yeah. well we're, we're they're trying to get young people to come online and um, spend money and it's like well don't you, you think you nike don't does the same thing or mcdonald's yeah. or you know it's well that, that piece i wrote that got all these people worked up i just sort of went her allegation is that facebook uniquely among companies puts profit before all, all other considerations yeah. it's like oh well done yeah is that your big revelation and hence comments by that idiot going that companies have some kind of compulsion to do the right thing. Since when? Yeah. Fucking, what's wrong with these people? <laughs> I run a company, and the right thing is making money for myself. Well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. and occasionally entertaining people at events like this. Yeah. yeah. But even that, you know, you'll, you'll have some sense of what's best practice for, yeah, sure. for your own way of doing things. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I've got my own code of ethics, and I'll, I'll, I'll be, you know, confrontational, but at the same time you know, not unnecessarily harmful yeah there's and, no point in being a complete bull in the china shop all the time no. or, or your or your shtick will get hackneyed people have to yeah, think that totally. there's some value that you add i have to say actually the the, the the serious point is that one of the most sensible things I, I was ever told when i was a sort of young analyst at a company called data monitor which oh, yeah. subsequently <laughs> bought by informer um was informer likes buying things pick well, your fight over them first was it um well no actually uh, uh no no because i think i think I, can't I think Data Monitor looked at buying Ovum. Oh, okay, remember, the other way around. I, I can't remember which, which way around it worked, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. I may be anyway. wrong. Anyway. Sorry. <laughs> tangent. The, the, the point being is, I was, I was told, given I was a contrary young analyst, is pick your fights yes. well. Yeah. yeah, choose your fights. Don't fight every trivial thing. Totally. And I think that, that, that I one of the things that people pick on a lot of time on, on Facebook is they'll, they'll, they don't pick the right fights. And there are fights to have with Facebook and the wider online social media advertising complex. But frankly, picking a fight over name change. Yeah. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, be a little bit snarky yeah. if that's your yeah. online brand, but it's not the yeah. biggest thing ever. No. And, and I think, you know, just to, to wrap this one up, I think... A lot of the evil that is being placed at the door of Facebook is actually just the fact that it, together with Twitter, YouTube, a few other platforms, has created the environment for people to interact at a level and a scale they never have before. And there was a quote... Can I make a prediction? Yeah, go for it. My, my prediction is that people still carry on calling it Facebook. Oh, yes. Not Meta. 
I think you'll get short odds on that. Yeah, mate. you still have yeah. Google them. But I don't even know that. Are they going to rebrand the actual? No, apparently no. they're just leaving face well, the well, social network. So it's an alphabet anyway. sort of move in that it's way. It's like alphabet. It's but there's a guy. Have you ever heard of a guy called Ben Thompson who's got a website called Stratus? Yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's good. He's, he's, he's good, good guy. And, and yeah. he just made the point. He compared it much more to Microsoft and Apple's move. Microsoft's pivot to the cloud. Apple's mm-hmm. pivot to mobile devices rather than yep. Macs. Um, and, and it probably does signify that. So it's symbolic of that. To be honest, actually, it's actually rebranding Oculus. And making Oculus much more prominent. Yeah, yeah. Within it, it, the it, whole. Ocul- Oculus is a bit of a clunky brand. Yeah. If you rebranded Oculus as Meta, yeah. then it's, all it's a bit more funky, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's more like integrated yeah. than just a device. Yeah. 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 So, so, so to finish off my point about, about all they're really doing is putting people in front of each <laughs> other, and it turns out we generally get on each other's tits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Zuckerberg goes, we're talking about the metaverse. He goes, we believe the metaverse is, will be the successor to the mobile internet. We will be able to feel present, feel like we're right there with people, no matter how far apart we actually are. And then my sentence I wrote after that, I said, given what Facebook, given what Facebook has been instrumental in revealing about people, in inverted commas, in the digital environment, it's questionable how, about how desirable that aim is. And that's my pushback mm. on the metaverse. Mm. I'm not sure I want more interaction digital interaction with uh, other people I, I would agree but i think there's there's another game and uh, uh, that's being played out here which is the big technology companies trying to take lumps out of each other yeah and actually like dorsey if, snarky tweet well but, but yeah but actually if you're facebook the thing which actually is holding you back is the dominance of the mobile phone so mm-hmm. if you could actually get circumvent, it. Mo- circumvent and all the stuff they recently did with and they're um, Apple, with what is it the Ray Ban who the company that owns Ray Ban Luxottica yeah. I think yeah. it is. Um yeah so if if Facebook can start trying to move the needle away from the phone to other visual oriented devices before ideally before Apple gets its own AR That's headset the thing, they would the door, love to do that. Then Facebook would love to do it because Facebook doesn't make phones whereas Google and Apple have that dominance and they hate a- Apple. A- Amazon Amazon sort of doesn't care because they're, they're going to be like we're going to be the back end for all of this whatever, whatever yeah. happens yeah yeah. And we'll oh, they, they have a go at devices every now and then and yeah, they always arse it up yeah and they'll, they'll do smart home and they'll do music mm. and a few other things um, and I think, I think you're right I, I think that Amazon's like yeah we're probably not going to go for the, 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 the devices which aren't smart speakers and, and, and things like that we'll probably stay away from but if you're Facebook you would love to, to have the next 20 years about non-phone Totally. Devices. Especially as they've got a head start, thanks to Oculus and all that. Yep. Cool. All right. Last thing. We'll keep it relatively short and sweet as we've banged on for about an hour and a half already, haven't we? Um, I blame you, Dean. Um, is You're getting it for free, though. Yeah, normally people have to pay for this. That's a good point. <laughs> but I, I hope, although I can't guarantee, <laughs> that it might help your brand as well. Let's see. Uh, you can you can give us a sort of ROI summary <laughs> in six months' time. Um, the, yeah, Results. So, having banged on about wacky stuff, we're going to get back down to earth and talk about results. It's quarterly season. I've got to admit, as a journalist, and as a journalist who's who's been especially time-constrained this week, because I've had to juggle lots of balls, and incidentally, we have um, offered a job to a new deputy editor, and he's accepted. So, hurrah. So, we might have another regular third on the pod, although I'm not going to throw him at the deep end too quickly. Mm. Um, and I've been doing lots of other stuff like to do with the awards and that sort of thing. Um, I I tend to just I tend to look at quarterlies and unless there's something really weird happening, like someone's missed a- analyst expectations or or someone's made a, a, a no, really a one off announcement, missing analyst ex- expectations. Well, by a lot. Yeah, by a so, lot. So, yeah. Let's say their share price is down by ten percent plus, <clears throat> or up by ten percent plus. Then, then I tend to not be that interested. But um, I you think you love them. What are you on about? You you, do, you don't like doing the service provider ones because they're always dull. But you love doing the vendor ones. Oh no! Because well, they always have a. It a, depends what you mean by love. I always do them because I always get traffic from them. So mm. there's 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 the pragmatism of my job versus what I fancy this doing. Way you, what I fancy doing is writing about internet culture stuff and winding up I my know trolls. You but this but this week you decided not to do any of the vendor stuff at all. No, exactly. Well, you, <laughs> What's but, happened to you? Well, because I couldn't be asked. But um, <laughs> but also, Wei, who used to work at Nokia back in the day, uh, put his hand up and bags Nokia. Yeah. So he covered them. But then you covered them too. And mm. um, given that I can't really remember what Wei said, I'm going to hand it over to you. <laughs> what, what happened at Nokia? That, I mean, I thought it was interesting. It wasn't the most interesting earnings statement they've ever had. Well, I rest my with. case then. But it was, it was a conti- it was, I mean, look, they, they've had huge problems, Nokia, um, a, a year or so ago 
being perceived as sort of fallen behind, I think, on their 5G strategy. They made a number of miscalculations, I think, which we talked about in the pod lots of times before. Yep, with them to do with chips the chips and, and all that. Um, and they were... Um, in, I don't know if crisis is probably too strong a word, but certainly things were bad enough that basically the CEO left, Rajiv Suri. They, they, their profits have kind of sort of, you know, um, disappeared. Uh, par- partly because of this 5G decision, I think, to use these more expensive chips that they had to kind of bring in yeah. after being let down by a key supplier. Intel. Yeah, A6. And, A6 um, and just quite top-heavy, I think. You know, after the Alcatel-Lucent in- integration that happened in 2016, 17... No, they, it's always going to be a biggie, wasn't it? It quite bloated. And, um, and so the new guy, Pekka and they had the, And the, let's not forget the, the rationale, or the stated rationale behind the Alcatel Lucent acquisition was this sort of one-stop shop yeah. for, for yeah. mobile and fixed, which, which, which hasn't turned which out has to be... Could, yeah, yeah. So, so the new guy, called, uh, guy called Pekka Lundmark, he used to work for them years ago, but then left telecom for a long time and is now, now come back, took over in August last year. So it's just over a year, a year and a bit that he's been there now. Um, and I, my takeaway was that the, the 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 results they they published yesterday, you know, it's a kind of continuation of his his turnaround strategy. Yeah, really, I think the shares um, are up a little bit, weren't they? Single figure percentage. Well, they were up six percent at one point okay. in the morning, which is pretty good increase. Um, yeah. I mean, he's what he's done basically is so for a start, the whole end to end thing's gone. You know, this whole which is almost like the rationale for buying Alcatel Lucent is it's gone. Yeah, and and they want to they want to try and sell things on a more kind of standalone basis, basically. So yeah. he's so he's done some restructuring to do with that. There's a big move to take staff out of the company. So I think they want to want to go down from about ninety thousand. I mean, the they've moment been culling to, for years, haven't they? Well, they have they have got rid of a lot of jobs recently, but it's going to go even. I think right. they want to get down to about eighty eighty to eighty five thousand from about ninety thousand at the moment. Okay. But at the same time, I mean, research and development spending was allowed to fall under Suri. Yes. And he he justified. He, I mean, I, I even spoke to him about this in an interview I had with him, and he sort of defended that move and said we can realise synergies and we can we can realise oh, savings by spending more in Eastern Europe and places like this. It never looks good when you're cutting R and D spending nah. and your and your competitors are increasing it. And I, I, I think I think Nokia's done quite a good job on talking earlier about private wireless. Yes, uh, so, so yeah. the, the, yeah. that's definitely an area where totally. they're, they're they're going pretty strong on. Yeah. And ironically, also with with. Um, um, the last year and a half, fixed networks yep. have, if anything, become an awful lot more. Oh, well, um, that was that was their big. So the big on, on the it? kind of. So the, I think their revenues are up two percent, and the the kind of standout bit of the company, which is much much smaller than mobile <coughs> access, was fixed <coughs> networks. I think they, they were up sort of. I can't remember what it was. But is it, it much, 20, much smaller? 30 per, it's much much smaller. Forty three forty three percent of their revenues come from mobile access, um, and it's. I can't even remember the figure now, but it's it's tiny. Com- so I got one slide because when I was um, editing Way's thing, I whacked in a slide myself. Yeah. Um, and the slide, this is from their their um, presentation. <clears throat> Said mobile networks driving cost competitiveness and and network infrastructure still growing s- strongly. Net sales for mobile networks Q three twenty one was. 2,315 whatever units they're talking about. Maybe that's millions of euros or something. And network infrastructure was 1,915. So it's not that much lower. No, no. no that network infrastructure isn't fixed access. Oh, sorry. Okay, um, correct me. Yeah, so, so the whole the revenues for the quarter were 5.4 billion, right? That's up, that's up 2% year on year. What they make from... Um, uh, from mobile net mobile access is about forty three percent of that. Okay. And what they make from fixed, um, so if I hadn't been on holiday, I just remember this off the top of my head, but it was five hundred and eighty eight million euros. Okay. So it's it's small, but it but that was up thirty percent. I mean that was the kind of and 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 the the story. I mean there's three things that have really worked in Nokia's favour on the fixed. One is the pandemic, <laughs> which means everybody goes back to their homes and starts working on broad, residential broadband networks. Um, one is the backlash against Chinese suppliers, which has been talked about a lot in 5G, but mm-hmm. is actually becoming an, we'll an issue in, in, a well. in fixed mm. as well. Um, and, and the other one is they've, they've just got a good reputation and their 
you know they're kind of the the only real alternative that you've got on to scale Ericsson. to, to yeah. Ericsson to uh, no to Huawei and ZTE. And the other so, thing is that there's going to be oh uh, fixed in, yeah. in right, future sorry. there's going to be post pandemic infrastructure funds as well. I would have thought we're going to play into that over the next couple of years. Sort of Marshall plans. Stuff. Well, there's all that, the US funding, the EU yep. funding. Yeah, yep, completely. Yeah, and and I, although I, I obviously the mobile industry is going to try and get a slice of that, I, um, yep. no pun intended. Uh, I'm fairly sure that a lot's going to go to fixed fixed infrastructure as well. Not, if not yeah, for, for yeah. back haul and front haul for for mobile networks as well yeah. as anything else. I think that they're, they're, um, they're the, the reason for the um, share price increase was that they've they've done really well on. As I say, they're kind of taking cost out and, and, and investing okay. in R and D. I mean, the R and D investments bring a gross margin improvement because you end up with a more competitive set of products and you can sort of price things better. But you you, you sort of take cost out of the products by investing in R and D, basically. So they've got a gross margin improvement. But the pro- I think net profit was up massively. It was like a seventy eight percent increase on what they reported a year. A year earlier. I'm so. just looking at this in, and I've got 380 private wireless customers. Right? Yeah, because I, mean, that, I know that was like 200 and something the last time I yeah. looked. So yeah. that's going up rapidly now. Some of those might be small to medium size, but the yeah. thing is that they tend to grow. And I think that, that Nokia got on the private 5G and 4G train a lot faster than Ericsson. Ericsson had this thing where, oh, we'll only sell to service providers. Or to well, they've, they've pivoted from well, that now. Well, they, they, yeah. started, they, 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 they pivoted. It's a very slow pivot. It's a slow pivot. It started, yeah. with, it started off with, we'll sell to mobile pivot. operators. Yeah. Then it's like, well, there's a couple of people like, you know, strategic like utilities and governments. Yeah. And then it's like, we'll sell to service providers. And yeah. I asked the definition of service providers, well, you know, it's like, you know, if this company, if, so Paris Airports has their own internal IT company. Yeah. Well, that's a service provider, isn't it? They, they said they do services for there. Yeah, it's, just a, it's just a, it's a semantical change. Uh, and so they, they sort of you know, progressively, and then they did dedicated networks, and they're, they're like, yep. all right, we'll have to sell the enterprise. Yep. But Nokia got ahead of that by about 18 months. Totally. Yeah. That was one thing I was thinking when we were chatting much earlier in the pod about um, uh, SI system integrators. Hmm. And one, things, one of the things SIs do, such as Accenture or whatever, is they understand how big corporates work. Hmm. You know, we work within a big corporate. I don't understand how the fucking former works, if I'm honest. Yeah. But I'm kind of shielded from it because we're this little journalistic enclave within what is largely an analyst and events and, and other forms of business information company. But to understand how a large corporate works is really to understand how to get money out of them, yeah. understand the, the chains. I bet you've got a much better appreciation of this than I do, Dean. Um, but that's, that strikes me as another reason why... Um, the likes of Ericsson, whatever, are still going to have to have SIs in the food chain because they're just plugged in to the to the people writing the checks and uh, all that. And the thing is, there's, t- there's different sorts of, of integrators. You've got well, the big IT integrators, you know, Accenture, Capgemini, IBM, and, and, and so on. But you've also got integrators who are like solution integrators, for often for individual industries. So it could be, you know, Siemens for industrial automation or Bosch or people who make, you know, mining solutions. Yep. Yep. And I think... And you either know or you don't. <clears throat> well, and also that it gets very fragmented very quickly. And I think there's some companies that actually like, well, probably Siemens and ABB and about half a dozen other industrial companies that do 10 verticals. But there's others that just do baggage management systems for airports or cranes for ports or whatever. And it doesn't matter whether it's Ericsson or whether it's... AT&T and Orange are never going to be able to understand all of those. And so I think absolutely the integrators are going to be hugely important. And what you might find is that the operators and also Ericsson and Nokia might pick a couple of verticals to go deep on. Yeah. And it could be healthcare. I think Telstra has got a mining subsidiary. Um, Just stands to reason because they're quite big on that yeah, in Australia. Yeah, right? uh, yeah, in Australia and also places like Papua New Guinea outside outside their footprint. Yeah, and I think that that will make sense. But they can't do it for everything, and so they can't have have one for mining and for chemicals and for education yeah. and for hospitals and all the rest. Can't of it. be all things to all uh, people. And so I think that you'll find that a lot of these companies will pick two, three, four, maybe five if you're AT and T or China Mobile, and then use integrators and other channels for the rest of it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to. I think go, the only thing I would yeah, say on. on Nokia, the only other thing I would say on a, on a more negative note, I, I think, okay. is that the mobile access business, which they, which is the bit they're trying to sort of reinvigorate with this pivot away from FPGAs, as you mentioned, and they had a big product refresh a few months ago, and they've come up with this. You know, everybody talks about weight of radio units, don't they, at the moment? Yeah, and and it was thing. quite well received by analysts uh, that I that I sort of. Um, I think respectful, like I Gabriel think it's Brown. I myself. <laughs> um, but they, 
that business just doesn't seem to... I mean, they've had a couple of setbacks, which is they lost this big sort of 5G contract in North America with Verizon, I think, which Samsung picked up. Um, they lost quite a bit of market share in China last year when they kind of didn't get any of the phase one work there. And I don't know, it just looks like that. It, there was... It was either flat or slightly down, the kind of mo- the mobile, mobile side. Yeah. yeah, and you, you, you compare it with what, what's happening with Eric. You still have this perception that despite this whole swap out of, of, of costly chips yeah. and attempt to refresh the product portfolio, I still think they're kind of perceived to be behind total Ericsson. Renaissance. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think analysts will be look, people who track this really closely will probably be looking to see signs of improvement mm. in, the, in subsequent quarters there. Otherwise, it's, there's going to be questions over it, really. I but. suppose the question is the, the time lags. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Between announcing something and yeah, actually totally, signing a deal. Totally, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, 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 none of this happens like, oh, it's like, oh, you got a new product. Yeah. We'll, we'll buy it yesterday. Yeah. Then, Completely, yeah. Swap out, swap out is is a lot c- a lot c- slower than it is in, in I used, phones. So. I, I I used to be an equity analyst for a while, and I used to have to do all these quarterly announcements and and half yearly ones and the rest of it. I'm so glad that I don't have to. I can leave it up to yeah. you. Yeah. I can listen to, <laughs> listen to it. Listen to on the podcast. There's more yeah. wedge in being an equity analyst, though, isn't there? Ah, uh, so I forget. If you if you're working for some big bank or something, not if like you own that. your own company. Um, uh, yes, I think. Uh, yeah, so, well, there was one I was doing. It was two thousand, two thousand and one. So, right. yeah. Although when I started in two thousand, it was because it was right. Yeah, it must have been a weird time to be in equity. Was, yeah. And then equity went off a cliff. Literally, uh, I, I think the FT got uh, uh, somehow they got a, their gossip column in the FT had the effervescently named Dean Bubbly is joining. <laughs> I think it's credit the day at the time. Brilliant. On the, uh, this must be the froth at the top of the market. Oh. And the thing is, they yeah, were it turns right. out you're not the first they're, 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 to take they, they don't write things like that anymore. The FT they've gone quite boring <laughs> if they used to do that sort of stuff. But. Uh. Yeah, well, I presumably, Dean, you, you've you've had to deal with effervescent oh, puns God. all your life. Oh no, that was me taking from oh, the FT yeah, by yeah, what yeah. he just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, okay. Final thing, because we overrunning, and I've got a call of nature ringing pretty fucking loud and clear right now. Um, is Huawei? Uh, well, it's, got, it's more results stuff, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So. Well, that was the, that was the original theme before we went off on our our customary tangents. Um, so they they send out because they're not a public company and and because China's a bit more opaque in general. Well, they've actually become worse, I think, in the last. Yeah, year. yeah. So they sent out a, like a, uh, a three paragraph thing going, yeah, here's here's the top line, and then um, Light Readings Robert Clark wrote it up, and his headline was Huawei sales plunge thirty eight percent in the third quarter. Oh, it was worse than I thought. I thought it was about thirty, but that's, yeah, yeah, and um, that's big. and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't... It's mainly handsets, yeah. From, it's, from, it's still mainly a handset drop I think off. from... I mean, it's just to what Dean said, the swap-out cycles in in network equipment are much slower than they are in uh, in the handset business. So if you get sanctions that are affecting you... I mean, the, the chips thing's a big issue for them on the network side as well as as well as the handset side. But I think that the main pain so far has come on... They, yeah. they even said there was a call with... Um, what's his name? Eric Shu. With next. Eric Shu said, I think it was Eric Shu who said that their smartphone business last year was about 50 billion in mm-hmm. revenues, and he expects 30 to 40 billion of that to disappear this year. Yeah, that's a hell of a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, well, and and it's not surprising. We know we know what the Americans have done to them. Yeah, um, and um, so I guess I guess from our point of view, given that we're professionally more interested in the network side of things and the handset side of things, um, we're interested to. St- to get some sense, not that not that Huawei offers very much yeah. sort of segmentation or transparency, <clears throat> get a sense of where that's going. Yeah, because there's got to come a time where their handset business is just trace. Yeah, where it's basically well, they've, selling they've sold, China. They've obviously sold. A they sold Honor. Yeah, um, and and they're basically only selling within China in, in a meaningful way. So there's got to come a time where we can just go. I'm okay, not even that's sure they're selling within in China in a meaningful way anymore. You reckon? Because well, I think, of the, I think because of the Android all the, thing. I, yeah, because like, because you, apparently you can't get. I mean, all the Huawei handsets now are low end. They can't provide yeah, you can't 5G. Get full fat Android on it. Whereas you can. You can't get full fat Android. You can't get 5G connectivity or whatever on them. You can't get 5G connectivity because of the chip. You can't thing. get 5G right, connectivity on Huawei handsets. It's all all, this, the all the stuff thing. that 5G is on is is the honor is the honor stuff basically. Okay. Right, so they're getting extra screwed. Um, so yes, uh, w- all I'm saying is when we get to the point where they reach a baseline i.e. Their, their smartphone business has dropped off as much as it's going to largely. Yeah, which was, well, then we remember, get that was the biggest with, part of Huawei as well. That well was, it's about that a third, was, wasn't it? It was more than 50% of revenues revenue, before but not profits, everything yeah, okay, started yeah, to yeah. go south. 
Yeah. I, I just trust me. One of the things this, this conversation has made me realise is, two years ago, I would have been travelling half the to- half my life. And I would have been, I would say, oh, well, last week I was in a mar- uh, yeah, an electronics market in Malaysia and I saw this or I saw that. And I, I, yeah. I've got no real reference points now. Yeah, yeah, no. I know. It's no, I think you travel a lot, though, don't you? Well, like, historically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, I, you know, and I, I'm like... Oh, well, China, do you share my my sort of squeamishness about going to China now that things have got a bit more... He doesn't write nasty things way. about China like you do. No, that's true. <laughs> that's an interesting... So you're not worried about going to China? That's an interesting question and one which I'm going to die. You're going to dodge. <laughs> you're totally entitled... I always say to any guest, they're entitled to plead the fifth at any <clears throat> moment, and that's fine. Um, okay. Have we got anything else? Dean, we haven't really asked you about Huawei. You can plead the fifth in general if you want, but, um, um, you know, their, their numbers are going down the toilet. We know why. It's mainly because of American <clears throat> sanctions. Do you have any sort of last thoughts on, on that particular thing? I, I would say, you know, I, I think that Huawei has... Yeah, I'm, I'm, to be honest, actually, I'm surprised that the current US administration hasn't sorted something out. Yeah, what, in terms of uh, reconciliation, in, uh, yeah, or, or, or worked, back or work, worked out some sort of, um, you know, last year they were talking about, oh, can we do a, like a, a split a non-China and a China, you know, subsidiary or something like that. Yeah, um, a bit like uh, to be honest, the way that TikTok seems to have managed it better. Yeah, it sort of got through. There was a bit of aggro about a year ago, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, and, and so I'm a bit surprised that hasn't happened. Um, mm. You know. And at the moment, if I look out and I, you know, I think about 6G, is I do see this risk of like yeah you know, bifurcation of the totally. world yeah. into two, maybe three even you know, areas. If, if India does its own thing, I yeah. don't think it will. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, and I, and part of me is like that's terrible. On the other hand, I, I think actually, you know what? I think harmonisation is overrated. I think that we're going to find that that if you do that and you do end up with two different technologies, a bit like we had CDMA and and GSM, GSMA GSM, in the past, yeah. you're going to find a bunch of companies that have dual mode boxes, dual mode phones. Mm. There will be it, it's ever the easier. The market will find a way. It's ever easier to make technology glue, especially yeah. with AI. Um, yeah. And and so. I think that we're going to see the pendulum go back to, yeah, you know, actually fragmentation, whether it's to serve geopolitical or to serve customization requirements, is not so bad. Cool. Well, that's an interesting thought on which to end it. Because I've got to end it, if I'm yeah. honest. Uh, so, <laughs> must be me, me, me too, actually. <laughs> I'd like to break out in a cold sweat here. Um, thanks, Dean. That was brilliant. Oh, cheers. Um, it was a really good chat, and you're welcome back anytime. Fantastic. Um, right. And uh, yeah, I'll wrap it up there. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you join us for the next one. Great. Well, I'll race you to the box, mate. <laughs>